Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Resonance Arcade. I am Chris, and I'm your host for today. Well, I'm a host every week, and these are my co-hosts, <laughs> Lewis and Stephen and Sam. Hi! Hello! Hi! Uh, this is a show about games. Uh, we talk about games and game development and everything to do with it. PCs, hardware, controllers, everything we possibly can. Um, today's subject is death in games, and I believe a few of the, uh, few of the guys are a bit excited about it. Well, yeah, death's a great subject. Well, we I think we all, when we mentioned it a few weeks ago, it just we all want to talk about that. We put we, we put like um, we put the show off last week uh, for for our regular viewers um, because basically Sam wanted to get his oar in on this one, uh, and as you can see, he's got a special avatar. I don't understand it, but uh, maybe Sam can explain it. Uh, it's an. I don't remember where exactly where that one comes from, but it seems in the ballpark. But uh, it's the character of. <laughs> Death from uh, the Sandman Library, which is a, a really, really awesome uh, series of graphic novels by Neil Gaiman, uh, who wrote it, and then various artists did the art for it. And Death is his sister. They're the six eternal beings. Dream, Death, oh, Destiny, um, Delirium. I can't remember all of them. But uh, it's really awesome to check they it out. They all begin with D. Yeah, yeah. The six, the six eternal beings that all begin with D, and they all run. They basically maintain the order of the universe and all that. Fair enough. Sounds That's, a lot of yeah. responsibility. Interesting. Yeah, it's um, great. It's awesome. So yeah, death, death in games. I'm, I haven't thought about it too much, but one thing that does come to mind is is how, how, kind of easy it is, to to die in games. If that makes sense to me. Death, obviously. Did you crap at them? No, 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 no. I didn't mean it that way. I meant you've only um, got to look at your Metal Gear Solid stream. What's it? Sixty-two. Let me let me try and explain. Yeah, sixty-two, and I'm on a Metal Gear Solid three. So you try playing it and die less than that. I dare you. Yeah, no problem. No problem. Obviously. Um, yeah, no. I didn't mean how easy it is to die. Sorry, I meant it's it's more that uh, death in games is handled in an easy way. It's not it doesn't seem to quite often, unless it's a beloved character or something like that, it seems to be that death is just you know, you can your character dies and you respawn. Especially in shooters and things like that, you know, in multiplayer you die and you respawn. Permadeath is obviously a thing in some games, but generally death is just a consequence of playing a game, isn't it? You and pretty much expect to die. In any in any game that has got any challenge to it whatsoever, <laughs> if you can get from the beginning to end without dying, you probably feel a little bit cheated. Yeah, I suppose. I mean, there's, there's obviously yeah. some games that don't deal with death at all. Uh, I'm I'm trying to think of some examples off the top of my head, but there there will be some games that don't have death in them. Puzzle games, you know, things like that, quite often don't have. Well, there's still a failure, death. and I think I think when we when we're talking about death here, we are talking about failure in games, aren't we? Really? Uh, or are we? A fail state. I, I, well, yeah, I would, it's, I would it's a shorthand that. for fail state, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I think. Um, I, I mean, I was thinking specifically of the the. You know, death when somebody or something or you die in a game. Right. I mean, my my understanding of the topic was that we were to, we re, we all were, although we're calling it death, what we're talking about is failing in a game. What happens? What? How does the game punish you? How do you lose the game? It's one of the aspects of it. It's yeah. not everything. It's because obviously there are a lot of fail states that have got nothing to do with death. So death is like a shorthand. Like if you if you die in a game, it usually means. A fail state, but as I think you put in a document, Lou, it's not in all games. It can be used as a, tran a necessary transition. Mm. Like Kratos dies in the first God of War, goes to the underworld, claws his way back up, and then kills Ares at the end anyway. So death is not always a fail state, but it is usually a fail state. Like 99% of the games when you die, that's like you've fucked up and you've got to go yeah. back and start again or do whatever. Hmm. I suppose. I mean, you can talk about whatever you want, Lou. I'm not going to stop you talking about fail no, states. No, no. But I, I, when I when we talk, when we said let's talk about death in games, I assumed we would be talking about the actual act of dying. Let's talk about death, baby. <laughs> let's talk about it. no. So as is usual, we have to argue about what the topic is before we can actually discuss the topic. <laughs> so what? always the same. Let's talk about Ares. Air, See what I did there. Ares. Yeah. Ares. Death. Eris. 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 Oh, seven. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, it was a really bad segue. That I, well, you didn't pronounce it properly. You said Ares. Eris. Eris doesn't sound I thought you quite as good. Uh, God of War again in the the original yeah. God of War. Yeah. So did I. 
But I wasn't. I was talking about Final Fantasy VII and the death in that, but we've already talked about that before, so we have, probably yeah. better we don't. We don't well, I mean, we can, we can get on to that. I think we should start, really. I think we should really clarify what it is that we're talking about, I guess. Hey, somebody, somebody, <laughs> and I'll, I'll, he, he's get, he gets his name in every week, what, what potato power. Um, he's just mentioned uh, Prince of Persia. Now, that is a good game to talk about with death because it does it handle is, yeah. it in a very, very different way from many other games. Well, maybe not now with these days, but it does, you know, it did at the time. Well, why don't we start there then? Which why don't we talk about talking about the Sons well? Time. I think Sons specific, of time. Yeah, specifically Sons the Sands of Time, probably because you don't actually die in that, though, do you? Exactly. Exactly. That's the point. And also, you don't die in a in the the rebooted one, which was just called Prince of Persia. Yeah. You know the one that was all the cell shading one that had an interesting death mechanic. Where is it, Elika or Erica? Elika. Hmm. She always saves you whenever you fail. She'll be like, she'll lift you up and put you back. Yeah, and you don't actually feel like you've died. It's, it flows, doesn't it, still? It, she just mm. picks you up and puts you back, and the game doesn't restart or anything like that. You just back into it. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. But it was an interesting idea. Of, it was an interesting are, alternative to the Sands of Time. Thing. Pretty sure that I found a way to die in that game. Pretty <laughs> sure that I found a way to die. I'm sure there, was, I'm sure there is a way to die. I'm, I'm, I can't remember. It's a while since I played it. <laughs> But yeah, in the Sands of Time, obviously, for those who haven't played it, you you reverse time whenever you die. I mean, it's a famous game now, so I'm sure most people have at least heard of it. But you know, if you if you die, he says something. Like, I can't remember exactly what it is. He I'm says, sure Sam, "Oh no, that's not how it happened." Yeah, yeah. So, so I'm sure Sam could quote quote it adver- verbatim. But... Well, we should probably clarify that the reason that that happens is because the whole setup of the game is that the prince is telling the story of his adventure to somebody. Mm. So it's quite funny because obviously. To really figure that out in your head, you're there going, so I ran across the wall, and then I fell out some spikes. No, I didn't. Um, no, no, no. I actually <laughs> made it over the spikes, uh, and it was fine. Well, I fell on the spikes again. Oh, no, I didn't, actually. And then <laughs> and then I fell. I tell you what, I've, I've tried. Instead of falling on the spikes this time, I jumped over to the other wall and fell on the spikes on the other side. But no, I didn't do that, actually. What? Do you know what's interesting, Mate, though? you shit telling the, stories. Sort it out. <laughs> with the time reversal mechanic in that game, when the prince reverses time it's implied that he remembers reversing time so that means all those horrible deaths he remembers that like he remembers those spikes stabbing through his torso i'm sure like... there's i'm sure there's some science fiction where some race somewhere remembers all the deaths or remembers all of the their past experiences from other lives and things like that I'm trying to think I'm sure i've heard that somewhere before uh, let us not, let me not stop the conversation. No, in a, in a film or a series oh, okay, or a okay. book or something like that. I, I, that's a concept of. Has of. anybody played um, all three of those, The Sands of Time, PS2? I, or I, I don't know if they were a multi platform. No. But it's an interesting overall overarching thing because obviously the whole point of the game is you reverse time to undo your mistakes, and when you die, you can undo that. And the reason that the second and the third game happen is because the prince tries to go and do that on a larger scale because his dad dies in the first game. And he's trying to undo all that and Spoilers. set it all right. Well, whatever. <laughs> it's been, that, that, I, game's been, that game's been out for like over 10 I, years. I played it. I, pl- I think I borrowed your copy, Sam, when you used to live here. And I, uh, I I played it and I don't think I completed it. I think I got a little bit like, oh, same oh, thing over and over. The first game's me. awesome. I, well, anyway. I'm sure it is. I just did, obviously didn't grasp it at the time. But he has to basically accept that there are some things in life that he can't just like rewind and fix and he can't keep changing the history to get it exactly the way he wants it which i just thought was interesting like the prince who could always escape death had to accept death in a way that is an inevitable part of life <laughs> there you go yes i like really into some... that more deeply than the actual writers that's, of the story did yeah but... <laughs> that's, a, that's that's death at nine minutes in well that's what's beautiful about any kind of any form of media though and we've t- said this before haven't we that you know games books films etc they're all you know they're all open to interpretation on an individual level the games are no different and the, you know the fact that you think you you look into death a little bit more than us or me maybe is interesting I, sorry i find I, death a very interesting topic especially when it comes to computer games how it's handled like what it means to you when it's you and what it means when it happens to somebody else as well it's pretty interesting did i did i mention it on a stream i know i've mentioned this to you guys before but i don't mention about um the hollow cubes in Star Wars Galaxies. No, I don't think the so. The MMO. Um, you, you had to. Holo, I think it was Holocubes or Holocrons. Holocrons, sorry. 
Um, anyway, you had to go and collect these holo holocrons across the entire universe, and once you got a certain amount of them, or once you did something with them, I did. I never did it. It was too complex. You became a Jedi, and yeah, not many people. Yeah, not many people became a Jedi. But once you were a Jedi, you had the option to hide all your. Uh, you know your Jedi powers and stuff, or show them. And if you showed them, everyone just basically wanted to kill you because you it was permadeath. And right. once you died, that was it. You had to get all the holocrons again, or do all the rubbish to get. And it took hundreds of hours to get these things. But imagine that. I mean, that. What 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 would be the point in becoming a Jedi and not being able to use your powers? Well, I suppose the idea being is that when you become a Jedi, you should be powerful enough to to defend yourself. I should, should really try and look, um, look at some footage for that because I've never seen a Jedi in those games. Oh, yeah. it, must have been, it must have been a good payoff for it. It must have been worth getting Jedi status. Or hmm. Maybe even if it didn't do anything other than say that you were a Jedi, I think that would be pretty cool in itself. I think everyone who plays that game... That's what you want to be, isn't it? Yeah, you don't yeah. be the target. I, I don't know a single Star Wars fan that says Jedi's a shit. <laughs> I, not, 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 off, not off the top of my head anyway. <laughs> Some of the Jedi were a bit pap in the prequels films. Just the individual Jedi's that just got pwned really easily. <laughs> the red shirt Jedi's. Yeah, yeah. There are some red shirt Jedi's in the Star Wars films, which kind of goes against the whole mythos of how they were built up, isn't it? Yeah. Hmm. Um. Yeah. I mean, while we're talking about interesting death mechanics, um, I've just seen something in the in the document which is which has amused me. I didn't think about this myself, but Grand Theft Auto, the way that you you get wasted and end up walking out of a hospital with the, <laughs> losing a bit yeah. of money. <laughs> I love what you put in the document: jumping out of an aeroplane with no parachute or being eaten by a shark and apparently be fixed for five thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I found that extremely funny. I put that in the document. I'd never I, thought I, about I... that. I'd never really thought about how ridiculous that was. That you you don't die; you just get horribly injured. Yeah, yeah. And Every then, death is just a horrible thing, including like being gunned down by like fifty policemen. You no, know, you don't go to jail. You just be like, "Well, you kind of been punished for it by being shot." Yeah. So, well, we've know, almost killed him. We'll give you a handshake in that. Yeah, they, they put him in the hospital, but don't put him in jail. Yeah. <laughs> Even though it's you could have killed hundreds of people. It's interesting the way that a lot of games have tried to justify or tried to 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 create some story around the fact that you die and have to be regenerated somehow. Like the um, the, the the Borderlands series, where you've got the kind of um, I can't remember the name of them, but the Hyperion the, the reconstructor jobby. Yeah, yeah, they basically just the, the reconstruct you and they give you a, a smart smart. Of your money, don't they? Yeah, and they also give you a smarmy little uh, yeah. a, a little kind of send off. Um, uh, isn't that the same as the, as the Vita Chamber from Bioshock, where it saves your genetic information and basically rebuilds your body? Like, you're yeah. not the same guy. That guy died, but they sort of recreate you and then send you out again. Yeah. yeah. There's, there's a similar concept in... Um, I was talking about permadeath then. In roguelike games, they tend to... It is permadeath. That's the point of them. You play it, you build your character up until you get... You know, until you die, and then you die. Now, there's roguelike or rogue lights as well, L I T E S, mm -hmm. and they are um, where it, it's a bit more forgiving and it allows you to um, spawn but keep some traits from the previous game. Um, there's not many that do it, I don't think, but Rogue Legacy is one of them, where you come back as your heir, so you die and you come back as your heir with certain traits. Have you Have you guys seen that game? I've seen it. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's really, quite interesting. it's quite fun as well. It's quite, it takes the piss out of itself and it's quite. It's it's good. I I really like the way that I Jim enjoyed did it. it. I, thing is, I'm not I'm not generally a fan of permadeath. <laughs> I think it's very harsh. And less there's only certain games where I think it works well. And one of them is kind of talking about roguelikes, but um, Dwarf Fortress, which I'm sure everyone's heard of, but not many people have played because it is impenetrable. It's got like a vertical. Um, uh, uh, you know what I mean? I know what you mean. Learning, yeah. learning curve. Learning, learning curve, curve, that's it, yeah. <laughs> it is ridiculous. But the um the, the the catchphrase of that game is something like something like uh, dying is fun. Because basically you will your 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 dwarves will perish at some point. You'll get overrun by um by goblins or something like that. Is that and what Dwarf Fortress is? A, a roguelike? It's not really a roguelike, it's kind of a cross between a roguelike and something like um Dungeon Keeper. 
Um, right. So it, it's it's a management game. You basically manage the dwarfs. Sounds so you don't like control I'd like them directly. it. But you can actually play it in adventure mode where it is very much like a roguelike. Uh, but it is an interesting game. But it, it, the, the whole point of it is that you will eventually die. So there's no... You know, it is permadeath in a sense. You don't you, you save the game, but when you come back to it, it continues going. There's no going back. Um, you save the game, but it continues. Well, it, as in, it doesn't. It doesn't. Um, it it doesn't allow you. It doesn't let you die and then start again, like from a previous point. Right. It's in hardcore mode permanently. You just keep going. FTL does that as well. Uh, it's got one save file. You can hack it by copying and pasting the save files around, but the, the you, you've got one save file, and if you die, that save file gets wiped, and you don't have any. It's a roguelike, though. It's a you know kind of indie roguelike. But I really like that. I really like that thing. But it is extremely difficult, and you get to a certain point that you have to be very good or very very lucky to get past it, and that kind of ruins the enjoyment slightly because you're always going to die. You're always. I think- I think the thing is, it, it, the, the games that tend to adopt the, the the permadeath strategy are games that are procedurally generated, where it doesn't really matter that much that you've got to go through it again because it's a different thing that you're going through. I think that couldn't really work for a game that wasn't procedurally generated because you'd have to do the same, you know, you'd have to do the opening scene or the first level a million times. Hmm. So it is interesting that it applies to a very specific type of game. <clears throat> I think, That's I mean, permadeath, permadeath has existed in quite a lot of things. Doesn't Minecraft have a version where... It's survival yeah. mode, isn't it? No, it's not survival mode. It's, it's just a hardcore mode in survival. There's, a, there's also um, Don't Starve as well. That's really harsh because you can, you can build up quite a, a good set of tools and, you know, gameplay, and then you can just die because the winter creeps in and freezes you or you get attacked yeah. by hounds and you haven't got enough enough stuff to fend them off. And, but again, oh, that's kind of a procedural game as well, isn't it? It is procedural. Um, yeah. I actually, I actually forgot all about that game until then, and it's quite a fun one to play, but again, really frustrating that you can't save it. And cont- I think there, um, there are mods you can get to save it, so it's more of a... You can make it a bit more enjoyable, but I think there's a lot of purists that would turn the nose up at that. See, they call these games permadeath, but it's not really permadeath, is it? Well, it doesn't stab you in the face when you die. It does not, not let you play the game again. Yeah, you just restart oh, right. the game. Yeah, that. Has there ever been any games where, like, when you die, that's it? You actually can't start the game anymore. I remember I, when uh, be Metal Gear. Massively... I don't. It's not. I'm, not, I'm sorry to talk about this again, but it didn't happen. But I remember there was an interview with you because you were talking about Metal Gear Solid Two, where he had an idea for doing that, and then obviously he was told that that's ridiculous. You can't do that. Like, yeah, where it's like you, you, you die and you have to buy the game again to play a, it. There's absolutely no strategy there at all, is there? There's no, there's no marketing strategy involved in whoever made that But decision. obviously, but I mean, if, if, if you're paying £50 for a game, then fair enough, that's just ridiculous. But if it's a £50 game, but you're only paying like a quid. Nah. I mean, it's it, it's kind of like the arcade type of it's thing, just, isn't it? Where, say, it's just an arcade game, isn't it? I was thinking it's arcade. Yeah. Lou's 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 actually doing that with our Metal Gear Solid run through, essentially. He's paying for the game if it was a pound every single time. Yeah, I, die. I am actually. It's like an yeah. yeah. put a quid in to to watch you bloody die. Yeah, so we've paid more for th- all three Metal Gear Solids. Well, Lou is essentially paying more for all three Metal <laughs> Metal Gear Solids than I paid for the HD remake. I think so far. I think it was so. Yeah, like that. I've got a <laughs> shitty deal, haven't I? You, you were the one who said were... it. I said to you, I told you it wasn't a good idea, I but no. So the first game was equivalent of basically paying thirty quid in an arcade <laughs> for the, to complete yeah, to watch the game. Chris spaz out for but, like several but the that's, advantage that's of that is, is that you could save where you were up to in that game, whereas yeah. obviously in an arcade you have to go right back to the beginning if you lost all your continues. That's interesting though, isn't it? You just mentioned arcade games. Mm. Yeah, the, 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 you don't. The, the, it's very different there because death actually costs you money. It's not a. The, there is repercussions to it. Yeah. Mm. But, and emotions got high. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, they, yeah, yeah, they did. Um, if you were if you were doing all right, and, and then if you, you died, and it was just like, oh, you've if got you no had more pound th- coins left. thirty continues left or something, because you put a load of money in, and then your mum calls you, and it's like, <laughs> oh, and then you can't. The amount of times I've found arcade machines with continues left in them, and it's just some kid who's just been pulled off by his mum, and <laughs> I've got so much free arcade game. Yeah, sure. Right, I saw it, your face there, Steve. It's Didn't interesting that, that, um, that, that all, most <laughs> games kind of followed the arcade re- regime of having lives and continues. So you'd have, say, three lives, and then that'd use a continue, and you had so many continues, Early and then on. that was it. Permadeath. Hmm. You had to start the game again. 
And it's it's interesting how that's kind of changed now, hasn't it? It's like the games aren't influenced by arcade games anymore. Games are something in their own right. Mm. Well, and now they've all adopted very quite interesting strategies for death, for how even how you um, reach death. Like, I, I was comparing the way that Doom and Quake and all the classic first-person shooters have basically 100 health. When your health runs out, you die. To games like Halo um, and Gears of War, where it's basically you kind of got to get a feel for how much damage you take, and if you, if you think yeah. you're taking too much, you've got to get out the way. That's a UI designer's job, though, to, to give that feedback to the player, and it, it becomes... Uh, it becomes a full-time job to do that with everything, not just the, the health, you know, all that other stuff. And it's 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 quite a big thing these days. They they put mm. a lot of concentration into how the UI works and interacts with the player. Um, I do actually like that. I think it's a. It, I do think it was a smart move. A lot of people, when Halo came out and played it, they didn't like it because they thought it was too much of a change. Mm. But it I do feels really more, like it. Certainly feels more natural though. Like when I'm playing COD or something. When I used to play COD, uh, the it has the same thing it has you know and a lot of fps games these days are now doing it blood splats on the screen or mm. you know something like the the close yeah. the, the, the screen it starts closing in faster and yeah, yeah and all of that feedback is is all just evolution this evolution of games that are from it, it, you know it used to just be beep bop bop now we're getting full arrays of colors and lights and sounds yeah, all the time to, to as feedback the, uh, it's a lot of like your older gamers will be like, oh, this regenerated health is stupid. And it's like, yeah, but it has the advantage of not having to go look for health pickups in the game. Like, it just removes that busy work from the game. It's like, well, I'm in a shooting game. Why am I going looking for health packs all over the shop all the time? I'll tell you yeah, what that I kind of thing. I don't mind losing that. I, it's a good, it's a fair trade-off. I do. I, I, I like the fact that some games have health packs. I wasn't that keen on, like, Quake, for example, having health packs. But... I, uh, well, for the multiplayer aspect, I think it was quite cool because it added another tactical twist to the to each level. You knew where the good health packs were. The mega health in e e Quake Two DM One was, you know, the the the, the centre basically of the map. It's where everyone wanted, you know, wanted to go and get it because it gave you a massive advantage. There's I think stats one, out there as well for this kind of I think thing. One one thing that it does rid uh, rid games of, which I'm glad that it does, is the the whole saving with one health. And then you've got to try and somehow finish the level with one health. Mm. There's nothing worse than that. You know what yeah, I mean? Like, got, I, you I, you I, hit a checkpoint and you've got, you've got no health left, and then you've got to get to the end of the level before you get... you basically like, got to like, yeah, do a perfect boss run to get yeah. past like, the that's awful. no hits. So that's a good... That's, that's very interesting, that, because I have not thought about that on my game, and I've got a health pack system in my game, mm. but I haven't thought about... The auto save feature. If they save it, you know, if I if I run a, a quick save, I'm gonna to have to have multiple saves in the back. But that's just annoying because as a gamer, you don't really want to go back to an old save and redo the bits that yeah. you've just done. Even if you've, even if there's a good reason for it, it still doesn't feel right and unnatural. But doing that was prevalent in games. I mean, again, you look to old arcade games. You died and you went back half the level and had to do it again. Oh, the full it, level. Oh, the full level, yeah. Mm. Yeah, well, it's, I think if you die, you went back partial, uh, partially, and then if you got less to continue, you had to start from the beginning of the level. Uh, every game yeah, was there different, was like wasn't checkpoints. it? I mean, that... There were different checkpoints, weren't there? Yeah. I mean, yeah. stuff Still like, um, like Mario, obviously, you had the like checkpoint halfway through, in which case, if you lost your life, you started there. If you lost all your lives, you had to start back, the world again. Back to the beginning, yeah. And in Sonic, well, you had no, that, little, uh, that, little, that little light pole yeah, that you, you flipped it over, yeah. and then that would... It was but in, Mario, uh, in, the original, in the original Mario, though, you had to you, you could collect lives, but you if you lost all your lives, you had to start the entire game again, not just the level or the world. Yeah, the yeah. entire world, the entire game had to start again. So it was your incentive to go and find extra lives, but you can. Yeah. And on Sonic yeah. didn't have health. You, you somehow rings sustained you. Yeah, didn't like Sonic's yeah. health system. I've got to be honest with you. It was I kind of really like that. I actually, feel, I feel like there's an analog between Sonic's. Way of doing things and the Halo Gears of War sort of thing, and in, in the, it's it's a warning that if you die, if you get hit again, you're going to die. But, but Mario had that as well, didn't they? With the mushrooms, they had, yeah, you had two yeah, different did. two different levels, and then when you were little Mario, if you got hit, you were dead. Or three yeah. in the later games, you had three different levels: Cape, Big, and then Little. Yeah, I but, like uh, that. Mario's got a health bar now, hasn't he? Pretty much Does in he? his modern games. Has he not got a health bar in his modern um, games? Not like in any old, old place. Super Mario Galaxy, he's got like a little health pie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hit a portion of the pie gets taken away. But if you you can again, the Mario games are quite easy to get hit in, and also quite easy to get extra lives and get 
Yeah, yeah. The, the, I think it's quite well done. Even the Gal- I, in fact, Galaxies is a ten out of ten game for me. It's a an excellent implementation the, uh, of a three D platform. The old Sonic the Hedgehog games are really, really not very forgiving. Like I've got the um, mm. the, the sort of Sega Mega Drive collection you can get on the PlayStation Three. I think you can get it on the Xbox as well. And it's got all three Sonic games on there. And I played through Sonic Two because I remember that being sort of one of my favourites. And got up to the the not the last stage, which is the Death Egg Zone, but the one before that, and lost all my continues and died. And I've been playing for about two hours, and I was like, "Right, <laughs> fuck you, man! I'm not doing all that again." I had a I had a bit of an emotional episode, I have to admit. <laughs> and that's what it was like. Like they were. They were brutal. That I don't remember that even being a particularly hard game, but it kicked my ass when I played it again as like a a twenty nine year old, however old I was yeah. when I played it. I Wing don't Fortress the... Zone. Yes. Oh, I... I did my head in. Did it keep falling off or something? I, I don't can't remember... remember where it was. I think I died on the last boss. I kept fucking up the last boss. There's a there's a time into defeating him, and I kept getting it wrong. Oh, I remember See, Wing Fortress. I think that's what happened. I think if I remember rightly, that's what happened with Volgin on MGS three with me. I got to him. I couldn't kill him, but I only had a very small amount of health. Like one hit was would have killed me, and I didn't. Yeah. I didn't have anything to regen. But you'll tell me there's some bloody tactic to it that I didn't do. There's there's quite a few ways to beat him. Actually, there's a few little daft little things you can do. Well, we'll do it this time, won't we? Yeah, I just try to actually remember them before we get to that. But there's ages to get to before that. Anyway, yeah, we've got like seven bosses to kill before we get there. <laughs> yeah. In multiple different ways, with reloading saves and all kinds of stuff, I assume. Yeah. Sorry if um, there's like someone keeps trying to fly into my eye. Any <laughs> long saw, legs? I think I saw something fly past. Yeah. No, it flew past the camera there. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Has anyone ever played um, any of the Darkness games? No, I, I, it's one of those that it's been on my radar every time one's been released, but I've never quite had the. Because that's interest. got quite an interesting. Like death is very much part of the story in that, in in which you kind of you die several times, and it's actually part of the story. And every time you die, that you keep trying to kill yourself in more and more grotesque ways, and then the darkness places you in this in your own personal hell while it rebuilds you. And the first one, it's kind of like some some bastardized World War uh, One trench scene. And you walk around, all these people are like stitched together with bits, and it's quite spooky, but. I, I think that's quite a good implementation of it. Mm. That's quite cool. Uh, yeah, there's a couple of different. I quite like death mechanics that are interesting, like that one you're talking about. So is that mandatory at certain story points, or yeah, is it um, just when you, whenever you die? There's, there, there's several points through the game where you die. Uh, the first one is completely unintentional, and that's when the darkness takes over you. Yeah. And then you start to learn about its evil intentions, and you kill yourself. That you keep trying to kill yourself, and it keeps bringing that's you it. back and trying to make you like do its bidding. I thought that the second the second Darkness game was actually a really really great game. The first one was just like pretty good, and the second one was apparently class. I enjoyed them both, and uh, it makes for some uh, some some quite gory gaming. Hmm. I haven't put it in a document, but a game that I've I've sort of bummed on this podcast before. It's a uh, Soul Reaver: Legacy of Cain, where you play as the the Wraith, who's not a, he was a former vampire, but he's transformed into something else. And you have to eat your enemy's souls to survive. And when you're in the material plane, you're because um, you can be in the spectral plane and the material plane. So when you die in the material plane, you just go to the spectral plane straight away. Um, when you're in the material plane, your health is constantly going down, so you have to feed to stay alive. Right. And when you go to the spectral plane, the, the environment changes. It changes color, but it also objects shift and morph. And so you use that as a way to get around obstacles and to progress through the game as well. And that's like an interesting death mechanic. Mm. When you die in the spectral plane, you just have to go back to the start of the game. But you can there are warp zones to get around the, the game, so you don't start again properly. But I, that was I, an interesting death mechanic. I did actually play that all the way through, but I can't remember. It was so long ago now. Uh, but I do remember enjoying it at the time. I mean, I played it all the way through, so I must have enjoyed it to some extent. Uh, Legacy yeah. of Kane Soul Reaver, I think it was t- the second yeah, one. Was yeah. it? It's the second Legacy of Kane game, and it was called Soul Reaver. Yeah. So I mean. That that reminded with the way you were describing that then reminded me of like how you work how uh, death works in MMO games such as uh, World of Warcraft. So when you die in World of Warcraft, you die at a spot, and then you respawn. I can't remember it, where it is. You respawn. Graveyard. Oh, is it a graveyard? You, you, you bind to a graveyard. Um, yeah, you you run around whenever you yeah you you bound you bind to graveyards so you don't 
so you don't have to run too far from your corpse anyway. Um, if you remember to bind. Your corpse. Yeah, if you remember to bind. If not, you have to run from the other side of the planet to get to yeah. your corpse. But you run to your corpse as a ghost. Other people can see you, I think. Other ghosts can see you. But yeah. nothing can. you can't interact with anything at all. You just literally have to run. But you run slightly faster normally as well in these scenarios. But yeah. it's still a laborious task, especially when you're balls deep in some dungeon somewhere that you've you know your, your corpse is, and it's like you have to get back to it in order to get your money and your items and or something your don't you? yeah yeah i think there's this in world of warcraft they made it like slightly softer than the, the typical mmo of the time and that you can you could pay so much and you could be spawned back at your corpse and mm. you could get a res off um, npcs and stuff like that but before that um in, in things like everquest it was really harsh like if you died as a high level player you could lose an entire level and you'd still have to walk all the way back to collect all your equipment off your corpse. Yeah, and it then you have to really escape nasty. from there without dying again as well, which sometimes created a problem. Because if you happen to fall, what if you fell in somewhere like um, in a pit, you couldn't retrieve your corpse, so you could get a res or you could get, you could get NP, you had to get a healer or a cleric to come with you which was real hard to get people to invest in helping you out. So you had to pay them a couple of platinum or gold or whatever to, to get them to come with you. Get your corpse, res it next to you, so you can then res properly. And it's like, oh. yeah, mm. it was crazy. Um, is that a, um, is that a staple of MMOs? Then is that do they, most of them do that? Does um, Night Seal Republic and all that? Or is that a MMO? That wasn't no, a Night Seal yeah. Republic. Uh, no. Star Wars Galaxy. Star Wars was. I'm not sure if Star Wars Galaxy has a had a corpse run. I can't remember. But either well, way, it's I mean, the same guys who did EverQuest. So I imagine it did have something similar. Quite a lot of the time, instead of having a corpse run, they'll just give you heavy penalties when you die. And that might have been the case in galaxies. I can't remember. Yeah. I, th I think the um the, the the balance of what happens when you die in MMOs is quite an interesting one because they, they've they've got progressively less harsh. Oh, hmm. well, because uh, as the as definitely. the market has opened up more commercially as well, the yeah. people want people aren't the pillar. A lot of these games aren't necessarily always the core gamer market. They'll they'll be extensions of that you know and they'll, they'll want to play and have fun rather than play and know that they're going to have to deal with this horrible mechanic in order to advance in the game i mean i can name i can name early mmos like um like uh ultima online where people could kill you and then loot your corpse so just steal mm. all your stuff so mm. you've spent hours and hours and hours well, grinding in this game and someone just whacks you around the head with a massive sword and steals all your stuff we've got back to that now with DayZ, though haven't we well, yeah. It's not, an, it's not necessarily. Well, I suppose it is an MMO, isn't it? It's not kind the typical MMO, but it's got that in it. DayZ seems to be more about actually psychologically owning people, or doesn't it? It's like getting them to do things just for your amusement and then shooting them anyway. <laughs> it, 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 I've seen a lot of stories about that game and, and videos and stuff where people have been made to kind of, you know, you, you, you're both given axes and you've got to. Whoever kills it, the, the other person gets to leave without being killed or something like that so they make you fight it out to the death with your mates hmm. and if you someone tries to run away and they get shot in the back of the head it's it's pretty harsh but it's also it's it's not about stealing people's stuff it's about actually doing something worse it's almost like some kind of stand-up teabagging yeah <laughs> it's embarrassing people i mean I've, I've seen i saw this guy once um i've watched i've watched a few streams of daisy and i saw this guy once he just he just kind of lured, he had this guy following around who was a newbie um and then he he kept telling him what to do but he was kind of he was kind of helping him but when it got to a point he, he got he found another guy they started getting shot at he thought he was getting lured somewhere in order to he was like zigzagging across the the world in order not to get shot by a sniper because this guy asked him to help him with something and he followed him but then when he got to this place this guy was actually genuine but he shot him the the, the guy who was coming to help him shot him anyway so it was like <laughs> it's just like can you not be friendly like there's zombies out there they're going to kill us can we not like team you up just and no stuff? trust in people anymore not in not in a, a public yeah. server no but there never has been has there because <laughs> no. there's always well, some way played, to ruin um, someone other people's games <clears throat> Has anyone played Grand Theft Auto online, the GTA 5 version specifically? Uh, no. Four, I did. I played four online. Well, GTA 5 is. Do you have an interesting thing whenever you encounter another player? Say if you're driving past them and they're driving past you in in uh, Los Santos. There's a lot. There's a, sometimes a little moment where there's that like, are they going to try and kill me now? Because whenever you kill another player, you get a little bit of you know XP. You can get some of their ammo and stuff. But not everybody does it. So you get these situations where. 
it's almost like a weird thing where you're like, we're going to do this? No, we're not. It's cool. And then you can decide, <laughs> and then you can decide to be the dickhead and be like, well, I might want to kill you this time. That, and I had yeah. a really, a really weird situation where I was just like, some guy, it was almost like a, a, a chase through the wilderness because we were both in the middle of nowhere and he kept chasing me down and I kept killing him. And he kept chasing me. I was like, leave me alone. But I couldn't escape because I couldn't find a vehicle. And he just kept, it was really weird. Brilliant. That was a strange little interaction. What happens when yeah. you die in GTA 5 online then? Where do you what, spawn how? at a hospital? I think. You, oh, no, do you, you don't. You don't actually. You just respawn oh. like a bit away, like a bit, a few feet away from wherever you died. Yeah, you don't respawn so at a hospital. It keeps you in the action. Yeah, it keeps you in the action. Yeah. I suppose right. with a world that big, that's probably the sensible thing to do, isn't it? Mm. So you can keep having the same rematch with the same person over and over again until one of you either quits, gets bored, or or runs away. That's that's the story <laughs> of a gamer's life, though. That's exactly how it works in Quake, for God's sake. You know, you you spawn somewhere, and someone will either spawn camp you or just get really lucky and happen to jump into where you're spawning, just as you, and they can kill you like three or four times in a row. Similar kind of thing, just on a smaller scale. That. Mm. Um, um, is anyone? Played um, Shadow of Mordor. Yeah, no, not yet. Going to get it though soon. There's, um, I was reading about. I was just doing a bit of research for this, and I read about the Nemesis system in that game, and it's really mm. interesting. So basically, when you whenever you die, the orc that killed you gets a bit of experience or levels up a bit, and then while you're dead and you kind of respawn and are getting back to that place, the, all the orcs will be fighting with one another, and that orc will have an advantage against the other ones and level up even more. And he'll come and find you as well later on. Yeah, and yeah. if you die to him again, then he levels up even more. So you end up creating mini-bosses of your own... I've been told that, that that game is a cross between uh, kind of like a, a Batman game, one of the yeah. latest Arkham Asylum with the combat system, which I haven't seen any footage of, so I don't know what it looks like. It but looks really lovely. The game lo looks great. I've also been told that it's a little bit samey and repetitive, but that's the only real bad point about it. I am Massively looking forward to playing it. and repetitive. Yeah. So what's um, your experience of that, that whole Nemesis system, Steve? Because some people have said that although the game's a bit samey, that kind of redeems it. It does, but it's you're still just fighting a random orc. Mm. Right. It's like it doesn't really change it that much. And yes, he might be a bit harder, he might have more health or more armour, but you're still just fighting an orc. What's the world like? Is it interesting? Um, it's... It you're wants in, to be open world, but it's very much... You feel very contained. Right. You're in Udun in, um, in Mordor, aren't you? So it's not, yeah. there's not much to look at, really. It's just, just No, and all it is, basically, you're surrounded by like mountains and cliffs. And basically, you've got this area that you're playing. It's not a massive world, similar to kind of like the way Batman isn't massive. Hmm. Um, it's all right. I, I lost interest with it very quickly. Yeah. Um, and you actually don't die in it because... You know, death's not ready for you. Every time you die, you just get forced back out into, into, into the living. Oh, there you go. Yeah. What is um, it set? Is it set during the time of the Lord of the Rings trilogy, or is it set after? Is it? Is it after? No, I think, I it's, think, it's, I think it's, it's between the, that and the Hobbit. Yeah, it's between the Hobbit and the Lord of the Rings yeah. when you actually oh, right, okay. when he's starting to build his forces back. All oh, right. So you don't actually interfere with the Lord of the Rings storyline in any way. You're on a completely separate storyline. You're like an Aragorn, yeah, yeah, aren't you? You're like a ranger or yeah. something, aren't you? Um, you're one of the rangers who was basically based around the Shadowlands um, before them got uh, taken over by the army of Mordor. And I, don't you get infused with the spirit of a dead elf as well or something? Yeah, it, it's actually a wraith. You get, um, a wraith. Yeah, you get kind of bound to him. So you can switch between the actual world and the wraith world. And yeah. there's lots of towers oh. that can jump off into a la, you know... It looks to me they got a lot of the gameplay looks very Assassin's Creedy, like the quantum mechanics extremely looks Assassin's very Creed. Assassin's Creed. Yeah, but I quite like the the combat looks really meaty and satisfying though. Like I don't know if it is. It looks very good. It does look very pretty, and it looks it probably looks a lot better than it is. I'm maybe being a bit harsh in it because I'm 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 not a fan of Assassin's Creed, so I'm probably not the best person to critique it to be honest. But. Uh... Yeah, I'll stop playing. But I, I like the idea that um, that when you die, that it actually makes the the, the play feel a bit more le like the enemy NPCs level up from killing you, the same way that you level up from killing them. I like. I think that's a really cool idea for a mechanic that um, hopefully infects a couple of other games and they try that out. I like that idea. It sounds like yeah, a I do as well. What you've got is well, you've you've got kind of a you don't have a, a leveling system per se, but you do have a, a system that kind of remembers you within these. Uh, 
Elder Scrolls games within Oblivion and Skyrim. They've got you know the, the NPCs kind of will react to you if they've been they've seen you before. I know it's a very simple thing and it's all scripted, but it's still that kind of thing. You know, it's always been kind of there in RPG games. Yeah, I think the difference yeah. with this is the fact that like like Sam says, the enemies are kind of on the same footing as you are, and that they they can they can better themselves by beating other players or other enemies. And I like that, and I think I think with this the nemesis system the orcs kind of get extra traits as well so if you lose to an orc so many times he can become invulnerable to range attacks and stuff like that so those mm. traits get more it gets stronger and he gets more like a boss i just like the idea that you're creating bosses because you're not good enough and if you um if he's when you start off uh, like sauron's got so many i don't know like lieutenants if you want to call them that i think there's like 18 or something and you can kill so many of them, but if you if if you take your time too much and die too many times, someone will actually step into one of the dead lieutenants' places, so you actually get the bosses that kind of regenerate themselves. Mm. Well, it kind of makes what, sense though, in terms of like if you were going to have a bunch of orcs and you killed the leaders, that other ones would step in. I, I, I quite so. like I like sense. anything that makes a realistic scenario in a game as long as it's implemented well, obviously. Now, what do you guys think about? death in games where it doesn't matter if you die there's no consequences to it whatsoever I can think of one example off the top of my head of this it wasn't the game really uh, that's Fez the indie game Fez you, you can fall off a platform as many times as you want, nothing happens you just respawn exactly where you, fall, you fell off mm. and it's I just see, I didn't like that game. I thought as beautiful as it was, it didn't really feel like it had any purpose to it. I, got, I think that's part of it, the fact that there was no danger. I got a few hours into it, uh, enjoyed what I did play, but then got really confused and really lost with how all the world was kind of yeah, put same, together yeah. and just ended up going, I'm not actually, there's no real challenge to this. It's just a laborious grind until I find all of these pieces to get to the end and see what happens. Mm. That's really all it was, and that's the kind of game that puts me off. If there's no, I'm not. I mean, the game was, as you said, beautiful, and the game I thought played well. It was. Uh, I know it had bugs when it came out, but I thought it was programmed fairly well, and you know, it's it 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 worked. And I liked the NPCs. I liked the ideas behind it, but the actual gameplay got a bit boring. Mm. Mm. So what do you Before think? We... What do you think about that, though? What do you think about games that don't have a consequence? Because that proves it's it depends if it's sorry. I say it, it proves it with you know with Fez that I lost interest. To me, anyway, it proves it that it's not a good thing. I, I think with some games, death isn't important to the actual to the game mechanics or to the story. Mm. Those games so seem to lack something, though. I'm thinking again of uh, the the original, not the original, the latest Prince of Persia. Um, not the latest game, but the latest Prince of Persia title. Because um, you know, Pharaoh would pick you up whenever you died. It she just puts you back on the on the closest surface. So there could be some quite long areas that you've tried. You know, you tried to get along when you've been jumping on hoops and stuff to get across a, a wall, and you could fall off, and she'll take you back to the platform. But it's still just the platform, and it's like it's just annoying that I have to keep doing it. Why not just not let me fall off? You know, it's well, just it, annoying. It, it doesn't even present a challenge. It's just like. Yeah, I think in that game it didn't. They were trying to do something different than the reverse time mechanic, but they didn't want to do another reverse time mechanic. So they kind of didn't have to find something good enough to replace it with. That was the problem. Corpse has just um, uh, talked about, just mentioned Braid, which is and you know another game that's got that reverse time mechanic as well. I just I remembered that I was playing that the other day actually. So does that what happens when you die in that game? Yeah, well, it's it's a bit different because. You can use the reverse... If you die, you can use reverse time to reverse your death, but the reverse time is actually part of the game as well. So you can sometimes do... As it gets further on, it gets more complicated, the puzzles, and they're a lot more yeah. elaborate. And as you get further onto it, sometimes you have to reverse time and then walk forward a little bit. It's really complicated, yeah. some of them. Yeah, there's really some things that are affected by time and some things that aren't. So you can reverse time and certain enemies will just carry on going as normal. Yeah. So you've got to try and get around them then reverse yourself then go forward then backwards and it's 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 a good puzzle game if you like puzzles like really hard puzzles go for it i'd say i just I didn't still like want to play it 
why does he? Um, what you mean? His design does he? Does he have much of a character in it? It just looks like a bit of a prick. He does. He looks like yeah. I know you. I know where you're coming from. Isn't though. he supposed to though? A bit of a fop. Yeah. Isn't fop. he supposed to though? I think he look, looks like he should be called Tarquin. Isn't he called <laughs> something really daft like Tim? Tim. That's it. Not daft. Yeah, Sorry to all the Tims out there. <laughs> Oh, Your name's mate, fucking Tim. daft, mate. Yeah. Our, our mate Greg is actually called Tim. <laughs> yeah. You get fucking Timothy Dalton knocking down in your ear like, how dare you? Boom. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, I'm not convinced. I think death is a very important part of computer games, generally. Games it that depends, like, where you it, can die. I mean, if, you, if you're going to die, make, make it interesting. Don't just, don't just kill them and put them back at a place. You know, give them something to work for. But it's most really games hard. do that. They just basically push you back to a checkpoint. If you that's, think about that's it, what death is. Design when you design a game it is a very hard thing to actually balance. You know, you you got to have a really good gauge of how how fun your game is to play and how fun the the elements are of your game that when it breaks down. Um, and it's very easy to get that wrong. Mm. And it does get. I mean, you, you, there's loads of old games where they, it got it wrong, and it was just frustrating. Et. Well, every, pretty much every game before 1995, maybe. To be honest, you can save your progress as well. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. That made, that that means saving your progress has made a huge difference to games because I think Bioshock is has the um, a man chooses mode where you can play without the fighter chambers, but you can quick save any time you want. So as long as you remember to quick save, it's not really that much more difficult as long as you make sure you do it frequently, mm. like. Um, but a lot of games like you can you can you can save any time you want in the all the Elder Scrolls games, can't you? That yeah. makes death kind of not an obstacle really because you just reload the last save. So yeah. who cares? Saves coming. Potatoes just uh, mentioned uh, Flappy Bird, and I know it may be a oh god Flappy well, Bird. Well, no, we we talked about it's, that in the first it's... episode, didn't we? Well, Did I'm we? sure we've talked about I'm it at some point. Sure, I'm sure I've talked about the flap, Flappy Bird death mechanic because it's a really interesting one, I think. And there is a quick recycle. Very quick. Like the, re- the reason that that game is so addictive is because death is so... Is, it, it, although it's harsh and you go right back to the very start, it's so quick that you but can just keep doing it. There's only one thing to do in that game, and that is yeah. get further before you die. That's the point of mm. that game. So, yeah, it needs to be quick. You're right. But... It, that there's no other way that you could do death. I don't think in that kind of thing. Well, you can really linger on it, and the fact that the fact that the um, the, the the programmer choose chose to make it really quick, like literally, you die, you start again, you die, you start again. He could have lingered on some death screens, going, "Oh no, you died," and feathers floating around and stuff like that. It was, I think, it was a conscious decision he made to make it really quick because otherwise it would just wouldn't have been addictive. Well, we, if every time you died, you had to wait five seconds. The game wouldn't have took off. Do we look back it's quite to a few games that do that? We look back to like older games, you know, the older Mario games and stuff. They were pretty quick, all the old mm. old Marios. But the more recent Marios, like the Galaxies, they have a little bit more of elaborate death sequences, and it's like, unless you fall off something. Um, and what? It's, it's like, yeah, and it's like, mate, I've, I've seen you do the same thing 500 times and it's just annoying having to wait 10 seconds every time I die, you know? Just yeah. just load it up, you know, let me skip whatever you're doing. Yeah, it's just Nintendo, though. It's, it's the same with opening chest or yeah. opening a door or... I think... Like, we, ooh, I'm... you've collected 20 rupees. Yippee! Fuck off. <laughs> you've got a map. <laughs> no, it's the... Etc. <laughs> I'm trying to think of some old games that didn't do that, but quite a lot of them did. did when you died, it you know play some some silly little jingle that meant you died, and you get you died. Well, it's, it, it, I think you have to remember that games didn't have to take ages to load. Sometimes some like your cartridge games, like your mm. SNES, SNES Mega Drive, when you died, it would just snap you back to wherever because you didn't have to read it off a disc and load it. I mean that is a factor that loading times on cartridges were faster. They couldn't hold as much information as a disc. Yeah. Um, one of the reasons why Nintendo went with an N64 cartridge was for that reason, they said. Also, the pirating thing was a big pirating deal. Pirating thing was a big thing, well. thing, yeah. yeah it was yeah. a big deal for them as well. So that's the way that games have had to, like... Again, this is why technology has influenced the way that games are made and the way that death is incorporated, because obviously death was really brutal and fast and hard in, in arcade, because they were coin guzzlers. That's what they were designed to do. They were designed to kill you and get your money off you, whereas now you play like a big 30-hour... A 30-hour action adventure game. If you have to go back to the beginning of the game every time, you wouldn't 
you wouldn't complete it, and then you wouldn't buy the sequel, and so on and so forth. So mm. there's, they're sort of making death fit the type of experience what, they try to give you. What your about home gaming, what, so what about the unique death experience that arcades give you though? That unique experience of having to wait thirty seconds, or giving you thirty seconds to rummage through your pockets, or run to your mum and get some money. I see. I mm. love that. No, I, but I that's love the, it. That's a unique death experience, and you're not going to get that in any game these days no, apart from I, arcades. I remember Shadow Warrior in the arcades. Oh, um, that is I a money the, guzzler, that one. It is, but it also the way the continue screen was kind of like really harsh. It was like I think there was blood splats on the screen and stuff like that. And as it went down, no, no, that was it. You, the, uh, there was a guy like the close up of the guy's face with a sword in front of it, wasn't it? Or yeah, something. yeah. And it was getting closer and closer as it counting down. And if you let the time run out, it like it cut his throat or something, and his blood squirted all over the screen. Do you, I love that. Do you remember the? Um... Nope, it's gone. Sorry. Continue. <laughs> a lot of them no, would do that though. They'd have, they'd have your character sort of standing there going like, Ugh, like nearly dying. And then if you didn't put the money in, they'd be like, and they'd properly <laughs> yeah. die. Yeah, Street Fighter did that, that as well, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I thought, what a brilliant, brilliant thing to do. And it's not, no one talks about that. I didn't think about that. But it was, it really did spur you on to find your money. And it was, it was part of the gameplay experience, that excitement <sighs> of finding the money to put, play on. That was it. I the, think that was beautifully implemented. The, there's also that, that, point of like maybe possibly running to see you like get some money off your mum or whatever or, or or trying to find it but you may if your mates are sat around and your mates one of your dickhead mates decides to hold down the a button and, and <laughs> at 30 seconds just goes <laughs> like within <laughs> within half a millisecond and you're like you fucking robot what are you doing why and you, you know even though you're only one boss through <laughs> it's still <laughs> that cost me 30 that pence that did <laughs> well, then it's I'd... their turn if they manage to do that, isn't it? So yeah, that's the incentive. So then you just spend the entire time pressing all the buttons while they're playing the next time. <laughs> the, the balance of that for arcade games is the, the 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 way that some games had cheap deaths. Like if you played any fighting game, it would let you win the first two battles, yeah. and in the third third one, every third person mm. you fought would be indestructible. Mm. They block everything and kick your ass. Yep. Because they wanted a coin off you. And it was impossible. Like there was bosses at the end of like things like, um, you know, like the the side scroll and beat 'em ups, like um, Streets Cadillac of Rage. And... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. The the end bosses of each like, level would always guarantee to be able to hit you. They'd always have some. Like, you'd hit them, that you'd knock them down, knock a bit of health off, and then they would have some retribution attack, which always got you. Yeah. So you would always lose a uh, continue. Yeah. And it was you know you had to balance that out and with an arcade games and that was shitty especially in beat em ups like uh, Mortal Kombat and Tekken where you well, knew it was going to be the third match and there was no way you could ever beat it's that it's exploitative game. isn't it and to be yeah. fair I, it's probably illegal these days I imagine if it's proven I don't think it is probably uh, though think about I, it it's robbing people well I know it's just like gambling though isn't it I suppose people. you can uh, just walk away can't you, you know. yeah gambling I said. <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> The, that stuff was all controlled by dip switches. I mean, when when you start playing with Mame, you realise how much of that stuff was intentional. Like, mm. the guys who owned the arcade machines could go on the back of them and make them as hard as they wanted. I was speaking to a guy uh, a, a good few years ago who, who does arcades in Blackpool, or around, does around, around the front, and he wanted me to do some programming for one of his um, PCBs or something. It's, it's one of his, the, the, you know, the motherboard in the, in the arcade things yeah. i can't remember what he wanted me to do exactly but i was it was really interesting but unfortunately it was totally unpaid and it was just like oh if something happens we'll, we'll get we'll make some money out of it you know and i didn't just decided not to but i would have been quite interested in getting you know figuring out how everything works and how to oh, yeah. send commands to it and stuff and speaking of emulators and and uh, uh things i'm gonna actually use my raspberry pi i think for a meme emulator so i'm quite looking forward a to a meme emulator you're gonna emulate meme you know what i mean Shut up. A multiple arcade m m machine, machine emulator. That's right. I've got yeah. MAME running on mine. Yeah, is it? you said there's a few problems with it, isn't there? There's a few things that you can't get to run full screen yet. Um, but this seems, like for what it is, it works really well. I'm, I'm very keen on getting Atari ST, Amiga, and Commodore 64 stuff. And I'm assuming MAME. No, MAME doesn't do that. No, it won't do that. MAME, I'll have to get other MAME, MAME emulators then. Um, I don't think the Raspberry Pi copes very well with Amiga emulators. No. I want to. Amiga Amiga's a bit of bitch to emulate. Yeah. Right. Even right. like top end PCs can't do it flawlessly. 
Well, they can't anyway. do PlayStation ones either, can they? After our experience oh. of uh, Metal Gear. This isn't, this isn't really death. It isn't death. Can no, I, can it isn't death. Show up. It's my bit. show, and I'll talk about what I want to talk about. <laughs> can we switch it around a bit to talking about not your character dying, but other characters dying? I was going I to do that. Bit, yeah. That's a very interesting part of gaming as I'm well. I'm going to excuse myself for two minutes. Yep, no okay, cool. I may have um, to do the same in a minute. I'm uh, building up down here. Oh, my word. You had plenty of times these before we started. I had two just before we started. <laughs> back to back. Why have you been At drinking? At the same time. I don't know. I think I've got a prostate <laughs> cancer or something. So. Oh, okay, cool. Um, yeah, talking cool. about... Yeah, cool. <laughs> <laughs> moving on. About other people dying, I, I, I think quite an interesting one uh, that Sam's put in a document is about games which allow you to not kill people. Like games where the emphasis is on being, you know, a badass murderer, but Allowing... making it so you can, so you don't have to. The ah, non-lethal okay. option. I like um, that though. I love my favourite games of all time are ones, and it stems from Metal Gear. It stems from Deus Ex. It stems from Dishonored. Um, <laughs> not not all three that's been mentioned in the document. Uh, yeah. I haven't actually read the document at all. I'm, I'm afraid, but no, th th those kind of games are my favourite type of games because you've got choice. Anything that makes it more realistic, anything that makes the game more playable or replayable, and not just addictively replayable, like Flappy Bird, for example. I, I'm in. I'm in. I'll play them again, and they're the only type of games that I replay years after the fact. I don't yeah. replay. I have. I'll never replay COD. You know. I think it's. I think it's part and parcel of those types of games that that is. That that's just one of the other options that you get. I mean, as well as all the open world and all the freedom to do whatever you want, that just naturally fits into that kind of paradigm, doesn't it? The the idea that you don't have to kill everyone. Um, there's other games like Thief where it actually you shouldn't be killing people in Thief because that's the hard way to do it. Uh, well, Hitman as well. Hitman has that thing of you don't kill anybody. If, to get the best rank, you've got to kill nobody except your assigned target. Right. So that was like an incentive to not go around blasting all the guards. Just get to the target and kill them. And, and then there's, there are also games that actually punish you for killing uh, innocence or, or tells you what, I mean there's a few games like uh, Assassin's Creed again bring that up if you kill too many civilians I don't think it was the case in the first game but possibly everything since uh, two onwards I th you'll you'll just desynchronize and you have to restart but the death in that game is very unfor it's sorry it's very forgiving it doesn't make any difference really you just restart somewhere else well, because you know, they, they get around that by saying, well, Ezio didn't die at that point, so you dying is desynchronized with his memory. Yeah, yeah. That's why they call it desync, which kind of makes sense in the, how they've set that story up. It kind of makes sense. Dishonored has an interesting uh, mechanic whereby as, if you kill people, you increase the chaos of the, the area and things like the, the rats are more likely to spawn. There's more yeah. guards. People are more alert. So it means that if you're being a murdering bastard, then they're going to put more obstacles in your way to, to stop you. It's really yeah, I nice. Really like that. Yeah, and, and if you actually do just murder everyone in the game, then you get a really bad ending as well. An ending that really kind of leaves a bit of a shitty taste in your mouth. Whereas you if you play it. through, <laughs> you do. Yeah, and I, I think it's really nice. Uh, that, that, that I think Morals. games started out. Yeah, I think I don't think there's any. I'm pretty sure there's there's no reward for completing Deus Ex with uh, without killing anyone. Am I right? I'm pretty sure that there's not nothing. There isn't even any acknowledgement no. at the end of a level that you didn't kill anyone. Whereas that has become since there that is, game. There is in Deus Ex Human Revolution, you get extra yeah. bonus XP and money for doing yeah. and things. And it affects your ending as it affects your ending as well. I think. Yeah, how many I think you kill. That's kind of a, not an emergent gameplay mechanic, but an emergent thing within the game's design industry, in that people playing Deus Ex decided to do it without killing anyone, and. Um, they did, you know, developers latched onto that. Why don't we incentivize this? And then I, you got Dishonored, which really does. I'm surprised it's not appeared in more games because it seems to be something that, that anybody that plays a game, not everybody, but most people that have played Deus Ex, now I've not played that, but I've played Human Revolution, and obviously Metal Gear and Dishonored. Now, all of us that have played it, I bet we all went the no-kill stealth route if we could. First time. We not tried fun. that because not only is it usually more challenging, it feels like the true way to do it like the only, way it should only be to you almost. only you to so you mate i've read so many different articles and blogs and people referring to the same game in totally different ways that people have had 
utterly different experiences with the, the likes of Oblivion and uh, you know the, the, the games that do you know the other games that give you the options. I've I always do stealth. I always do the good side first, like um, in Knights of the Old Republic. You know, I always do the good, uh, the, the Jedi side before the Sith side. I but kill I'm, people who I think deserved to die. I, I've done that with one or two games. Um, you are the arbiter. I am the arbiter. I think that was it. It's where, where, if I'm playing um, Mass Effect, uh, you don't you make decisions. Yeah. You don't die necessarily, good or bad. I mean, you do, but you know what I mean. You, you make decisions on it. But in that kind of game, I will talk to people like I think they deserve to be spoken to, rather than try and choose the best option every time because usually I end up Paragon anyway because of the way that my mind works because mm. I'm dead nice I play games trying to be the good guy but when it's a game where there are people to be killed especially stealth games I've got to balance my OCD and my OCD wants to kill or neutralise everyone on the level I don't like walking past people if someone's still standing mm. then that's not a, for me it's like incomplete I think it's anxiety Lou I think it is an anxiety that you think they're going to come and kill you if you don't kill them. No, it's not. It's just a feeling of incompleteness. Okay, it's a feeling that I haven't done everything in the level because I've walked past bits. That's what I experience then. And if I can um, tranquilize or, or non lethally kill people without any kind of penalty, then I'll, I'll do that as a preference to killing them. So in Metal Gear, I will as often as I can. I know I'm not doing it in our playthrough, but when I'm playing on my own, I, I hammer the stealth big time. Mm. Yeah, but I would imagine that if you weren't playing with the money incentive, you'd probably let yourself die and restart the section and sneak through it. That's what I'd like with Metal Gear. Yes. Because they, that is that has a fairly forgiving death checkpoint system where you just restart and uh, well, at the beginning of the room, essentially. Some of it is. Not all of them are like that. There's some areas that are... I mean, look at the, the Raven fight, tank so. fight, for example. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> yeah. Amount of times. Anyway. Uh, something Excuse else me. I mentioned in the document is games um, that give you the responsibility of choosing. Yeah, but um, Mass Effect is a really good one for that. But I reckon, like I said in the document, it even goes back to things like Lemmings and stuff. And even like yeah. RTS games have an element of that in them as well, where you have to choose what to sacrifice in order to get what you want, you know? Well, I'm going to bring it up again. Knights of the Old Republic had a nice, a nice little mechanic. The first game, right at the end... Uh, well, in fact, all the way through, you were kind of building karma or building, you know, building bad karma or whatever you call it. I can't remember. Um, but by the end of the game, you had to choose which one of your teammates survived and which one didn't. Again, it's a Bioware thing. They tend to put a lot of time into those kind of games where you've got lots of moral choices and you've got consequences to your actions. I mean, Dragon Age does it. Dragon Age Inquisition is out, by the way. I haven't got it yet, and I'm an idiot. It's a couple of weeks ago it came out, but if you have I haven't it, played the other ones, I don't know if I'm if they're meant to be very good or not. Dragon Age, Dragon Age Origins yeah. was was well well received. Um, Dragon Age Two was not received very well, but I quite liked it. I played Dragon Age Origins on the 360. Uh, I've got it on my PC now, and I haven't played it through yet. And I got Dragon Age Two on my PC when it first came out, and I liked it. I I thought it was all right. It was it was it was much nicer looking. The control system was different. But I thought it was all right. Well, I couldn't get away no. with Dragon Age. No, it's not everyone's cup of tea. It's quite a if you if you get into it, the the combat system and the you know the kind of rules system that's in place is it's a very it's a logical system you have to put in place to uh, do to get your NPCs or your teammates to do things in certain six to eight situations. If there are five enemies around and you have this spell equipped, then cast an area of effect or something. You know. It's a it's a big logic tree that you have to program if you want to, but you can just leave it on default settings and just enjoy it as an arcade game, you know. But anyway, Inquisition, I want to get hold of. It's brilliant. Going to be yeah, brilliant. Yeah. I think um, there's something else that I put in the document about death. There's a couple of things about death of other characters. There's all, there's death of characters that you know, which is used often the same way it's used in in a lot of stories is to to get you to sort of go. <gasps> Like what's going to happen next? You know, like with the death of Ares is obviously probably the mm. best example that everyone knows. That I've never played to that point in the game, but I know that for everyone that has, it's a really big milestone of that game. And once you get to that point, there's no way you're not going to complete that game, right? You're going to continue until you get to the end. It also mm. feels like that's when the game really opens up to me. Like mm -hmm. I know it opens up when you get out of Midgar, but it keeps doing that. They keep introducing these new things, like events, set pieces that open another whole. 
plethora of, of stuff to do in the game, you know? There's, there's quite a lot of that sort of thing in Final Fantasy VII. There, there are other minor characters that, that, that die or you kill um, throughout the game. You also get the option as well with a few of them, don't you? I mean, yeah. uh, oh, hang on, do you? Oh, really? Cool. I didn't know that. Um, do you get the is, uh, is 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 that cat Sith dude? One of them. He, he well, he he's just a robot, so he he does uh, he sacrifices himself um, at one point, hey. and you Such feel a bit shitty. Massive for it. knobhead. It's like the, yeah, but it's the one point in the game where you actually think maybe he's not so much of a knobhead. He actually. I was like, fucking go then. <laughs> Stop talking about it and just go but, to it. But then you realise that he doesn't die. But there's other yeah. characters like Dine, um, Barrett's other half, yeah, yeah. so to speak. Um, that's quite a quite a moment in the game as well. I think one of the first games I played where a certain character's death had an effect on me is Daft It Sounds was uh, Cannon Fodder. Yeah? Oh, yeah, yeah. Because that... you had your, th uh, your two on your first level and three on the second level main characters, which were Jules, Jupes, and Stu. Yeah. And I just really wanted to keep them alive all the way through it. And then if, if they died, when they died, when it went back to the next level screen, you saw the little graves on the yeah. hill with the music playing as more troops marched over and wanted to be recruited. That, that was so good. That makes me think of XCOM. I was just going to say yeah. XCOM after that, I mean, I've only, I have played the original book years ago, but the, the most recent one, I imagine, has a very similar mechanic to the old one in terms of the death. You know, you, you build your soldiers <laughs> up. If did they, did, did, the only difference is that the, the, the original, basically, you went through the entire population of the entire world. Yeah. <laughs> there's, um, in the open XCOM remake, there's a, there's a kind of memorial board, and it's just it's this massive scrolling <laughs> list of everyone who's died in yeah. your service. Most people in the first mission, like rookies who died, like, yeah. they haven't even got off the transport. They're just like grenades landed in the transport and killed everyone. But the, new, the, oh, newest, the newest one, I, I managed to do it. I mean, I did save scum it, but I managed to do it without anyone dying at all by the end of it. So, um, it is, can you not do that at all with XCOM, the original? You can, but it's so hard. Yeah. It is so hard. <laughs> it's it's really worth it as well. You can actually, the, if you build up the, the ranks and the stats of the, the, the typical characters, you can make pretty much unstoppable soldiers, but it's so hard to get there that you never do. Hmm. Is, um, has everyone played Fallout 3? Yes. Yeah. Do you remember when that game came out? And it's even to do with how the, it promoted itself as well. All the stuff to do with the dog, dog meat. Now that it was in, it was in the promotional posters of the of the Wanderer with the dog next to them. Yeah. And there was there was a there was stuff to do with it in its promotional things as well. And I thought it was like a big part of the game how you were going to meet a dog. Yeah. Like, well, as soon as I got to the end, yeah, I was like, yeah. going to meet a dog, and I thought the dog would be with me for the whole game. And no matter what I did with that dog, it died so easily. <laughs> It was just, uh, it would always run into every fight like an idiot and just get killed. There's a couple, you know, <laughs> the one is the one that you find in the junkyard. There's only one as far as I remember, mate. The one, well, the one you find in the junkyard, he, he, he stayed with me forever. He was awesome. Dog me. He died with Yeah, he was so dog me. Yeah, he was called dog me, wasn't he? Yeah, sorry. He died so quickly, I could not keep that fucking thing alive. Because he would <laughs> always, every time he saw a bad guy, he'd just be like, and run off and fight it. And I wouldn't even know where he was, and then he'd be like, dog me, has died. It's like, right, cheers, mate. You were playing fetch with a fat boy or something, were you? <laughs> uh, well, just that one time, but... <laughs> but I don't just, remember I... that character. I don't think I even came across the dog. Yeah, there's always, like... They, they put in characters that are, they are supposed to die. Well, I mean, the you could keep it alive, but... Uh, like They put in a character that's supposed to die, and I think it helps you get into what you're doing. It. Like I said in the in the... In the characters who died, one, you know, when a certain character dies at a certain point, it makes you invested in what you're doing. It makes you want to finish the fight. It makes you want to beat the boss. It makes you want to see what happens, you know? Yeah, it's interesting in that it has to, it generally has to be story led, doesn't it? Because if you get, you know, like something like the, the companions that you get in uh, Skyrim, you know, yeah, you, don't don't care. Care, you don't care at all if that woman who suddenly started following you gets killed. Like, you don't even notice it. Although it does really over, steal a clothes and nick a gear. Does really yeah. annoy me though if they've got all of like loads of loot that I've given them and they die. Because you can't I get it back home. I don't bother with them. Oh, I, uh, I'm a loot whore, so I, I love that kind of stuff. But I also get really annoyed if I if they get stuck behind something and I forget that they're with me and they're stuck behind something for ages. And yeah. the, like the next time I go back to a village, they suddenly spawn in my house, and I'm like, "What? Oh, did, did you come from? Oh shit! Yeah, forgot about that. I've done three dungeons since last time I saw you." <laughs> You've just what been is... stuck behind a tree going like that. Yeah. Which Call of Duty is it with the, the emphasis on the dogs? 
Is that Ghosts, is it? I don't know, I haven't seen uh, I don't know. the gameplay Ghosts. Well, I'm, sure that, so. I'm sure that one made a big thing about dogs, didn't it? Like, as, as companions. And I'm sure it plays on that, and at some point the dogs die, because the dogs always die. She's all the website, I remember called... the dogs in the game being those things that always tried to it jumped on you. You had to press the stick at the right time. Hardest fucking thing in the entire yeah. game. Was when a dog. I used to get, I was shit scared of those dogs. Like all the human soldiers, what bothered? As soon as a dog was released on me, I was like, no, no, click the stick. Why has it got <laughs> to be so precise? I'm dead again. Ah! <laughs> it annoyed the hell out of me. The um, I might get this wrong. Was it Shadow Rod Warrior or Shinobi? Uh, the the Sh- game with the dog? the dog, was it Shinobi? Oh, hang on, no, hang on, no, it was, it was um, Sh- Shadow Dancer, it. wasn't it? Shadow Dancer, Shadow that's Dancer. it. That is the only dog in a game that's been any good ever. Shadow Dancer, brilliant yeah. that dog, it's awesome. Yeah, I think it was Shadow Dancer. You're right. Yes, it was. You had like a wolf dog thing with you. Shadow Dancer. Yep, wolf it is definitely. Because there was an airport level, wasn't there? There's also a. a Film with um, what's his face, Clive Owen in it, <laughs> called Shadow Dancer. Never heard of it. I don't, think, I don't think it's based on the game. No, no, blatantly not. He's got a, <laughs> he's got a pistol in his hand like that, and he's going. Because you're so. a ninja, weren't you, or something in Shadow Dancer? Yeah, yeah. That's why that I got to mix up with Shinobi. That was one of those games that I used. I got about two copies of on my Commodore 64, bef- and neither of them worked. And I had to get another one. And then I realised it was my, my bloody Commodore 64 that was broken, and we ended up getting another one from a car boot. We've got seven Commodore 64s now. Nice. Ridiculous. <clears throat> but Death's also would have got an interesting element in games. This is another thing for the document in that. Most games, not all of them, but most games are built around conflict and you kill things like I I, I put in a document that even Mario who even Mario, who's a really happy go looking character, walks a path paved with the corpses of his enemies. Mm-hmm. You I kill love that. hundreds of, of enemies in Mario, but it's a really like da, 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 da. it's like oh happy the sun's shining and it's got a little smiley face on it. But you're killing everything. <laughs> like <laughs> It's not as if it's a nice people. death either. They either set and fight them or crushing them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> or knocking them off cliffs or whatever yeah. it is. Like when they, you know. Corpse has mentioned about Fable having a dog. Just yeah, that it can die in that as well. I think the dog in Fable can die. And that, uh, is, is it that in Fable Two? Yeah, I'm going to say it's in Fable. Uh, well, I've, I've, I'm pretty sure I've, it's in Fable Two as well. If it's not in One, I don't think it's in One. So I've just been playing through One. Oh, I've got Anniversary Edition, actually, to play. I haven't played that yet. Has that been out for 10 years already? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, this this year, I think, 2013. It... Original Xbox, wasn't it, man? Last year. Yeah. Jesus. Was it? Yeah, original Xbox. All right. I just think of that being a fairly new series of games, and it blatantly isn't. No, they're not. <laughs> We're old now, man. I know we are. Here we are. We are oh, well God. old when it comes to games. Yeah, it was yeah, Fable are. 2 and Fable 3. Yeah. I still, I'm not into the trendy games these days, like the CODs and that. You know, I'm, I'm like, it's like my music. You know, I like, I know what I like, and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna. CODs not new. It's just no. It just... I mean, the trendy though, aren't they? It's what everybody who yeah. isn't a gamer plays. You know, Watch Dogs is the trendy you know I mean? one, or Destiny. Well, like Watch, Dogs, Watch Dogs was pretty much a failure, wasn't it? I suppose. I mean, yep. I think it sold yeah. lots, but it was a, to in be terms fair, of Des- the implementation. Destiny's not doing gangbusters that they wanted it to do, is it? Good. Really. Yeah. Bungie deserve it. Take that, yeah, Bungie. you heard that, Bungie lovers. Halo is a boring game. Get over it. <sighs> it's boring. It is boring. There's some interesting things in it. The so are nice. pretty cool. See, if if you play Fable the same way you play Metal Gear Solid, I can understand why you'd find it boring. <laughs> Fable's great, mate. Halo, Fable. you said. You Halo. said Fable. Yeah. Fable. Fable. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you heard. Oh dear! <laughs> no, I just I, I I'm not going to explain again why I hate fail up fail law. Anyway, Mythalos said that death is the most relatable fail state, which is an interesting one actually, isn't it? Relatable? No, it's not. Well, yeah, well it is. I mean, you think it's kind of like how else would a game punish you in a way that's relatable? Like tell you off? I suppose uh, some games uh, did uh. do that, didn't they? Yeah, yeah I, I get. Well, I get what you mean. It's like it's it's an inst- That's what I'm saying. You instantly know that it went wrong if you're dead, don't you? That's that's basically bet, what you mean. I bet you could look back to some old articles about um, about games and death in them, and people. Well, we know that people already complain about the death in GTA, the the 
vi- you know the violence and the maiming and everything else that comes with it and this, the maniacs that appear from instantly playing it touching a touch bloody keypad or whatever keypad. yeah yeah <laughs> touch keypad well, I played the first Grand Theft Auto, I think, when it came out in 1997, and I've probably killed about 100 people that, you know. But keep it on the down low and try not to, try still try not to get caught. You what? Only 100? Yeah, well, I just space them out. <laughs> I, try spa- I try and portion out my bloodlust, uh, which, is, uh, which is given to me by Grand Theft Auto, because as a human being, I don't possess any sort of killer instinct that is a survival instinct whatsoever. Yeah. It's not, it's not any, you know... Grand Theft Auto invented my uh, desire for violence. It wasn't already innate in me right. at all or anything. I mean, I bet you didn't even beat prostitutes around the head with a baseball bat after you'd finished with them until you. How would I have ever thought to do that? It's not exactly even that ever been a, an That's idea. That's educational, that man. It taught me everything I know that game. How to how to live. <laughs> Hello, everybody who's watching. This is Resonance Arcade. We are talking about games and death in games. We're not always talking about prostitution. Not always. No, and, and beating prostitutes up. Um, Damn it! So yes, let's move on. Okay. <laughs> um, I wanted to get I wanted to get into the subject of where, this is why the Mario thing came in about how like combat and killing is a really for some people a really integral part of what games are about. I mean, I used to be a little bit like this where I was I sort of was pulled back from the more kiddie friendly games because I wanted I wanted that blood, I wanted the violence, I wanted like, most of my games in my collection at one time were a 15 or an 18 and I was like I want to chop people's heads off, I want to shoot guys in the face and that was like a, a, a part of what gaming was about and it, it still is about for a shitload of people like the reason that Call of Duty is so huge is because lo- most teenager boys want to get a game where you get to shoot dudes in the face and it sort of trivialises it a little bit like they could put in a document like a game like Uncharted which again is quite a sort of happy-go-lucky hey it's all a bit jokey and fun kind of game you kill hundreds of people and it, it's it, it's just it's just sort of glossed over it's not really that big a deal you should be having massive psychological trauma from doing that not making quips but you, you climb you know, over no it. you shouldn't <laughs> because it's not real I know it's not real but I'm sort of like you want to make things immersive and it's sort of set you know you've got real people it's trying to, the games are getting more realistic it's still it disconnected, is. though, even with virtual reality and haptic feedback and all the other stuff. It's still not real. It's, your, your body knows you. the uncanny valley exists, you know? We're always going to know that it's not... If you if you actually are affected by computer games in any way, shape, or form, to you know, and you become violent or a murderer, there's something wrong with you anyway. Mm-hmm. You can't... Yeah. We, 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 of all people, we, we couldn't... We've been playing them our entire life, and I haven't killed anyone yet. Yeah. yeah. Yet. But I will. But it does. It does allow you to. I don't want to say it allows you to kind of live out a fantasy, but it does allow you to kind of see what it's like in some way. Like, see, I don't know. No, it's fair, fair enough, right? And again, this it is allows probably you to do it without actually hurting someone. No, it doesn't. I don't go and play a computer game because I want to kill people. No, I don't. That, that is it. That you are mental. That is <laughs> that is a crazy man speaking. <laughs> no, but when I, I I kind of agree with what Sam said there that when I went through a phase where I just wanted to kill shit in games and I really enjoyed it and it was like blowing you know you the, the more over the that. top the better. Most of the thing, most of the games that you want to play are just kill everybody. Look, yeah. I, you know the games that you've, we've historically played as a clan have just been get in a room and shoot someone. There's nothing more to it. It is just a first a shoot again. Yeah, and I th- I, don't, I think it's a little bit. It's a little bit chillish to say. Well, it, there's no, there's no, there's no psychological impact of doing that. There, there's a, there's a little bit. There's a little bit of an instinct in all people to, to sort of the kill to survive or the, the aggression that, that we, everybody has in them. And even if it's just pressing buttons on a controller, you get a little bit of visual feedback that gives you a little bit of the, the sort of you're doing something valid even though you're not. It's, there's a little bit of that. And I don't think you can say that it, it's totally absent from games entirely. The same way that like. That watching watching violent action films is a little bit of that as well. Like it's just a little bit of fun. Of violence is not yeah. real. It gives you to indulge in that side of things without it's really getting fun. your hands dirty. In the same way that like tenderizing a steak is fun. Uh, like, no, I'm, I'm, hit I'm, a piece of meat with a hammer, but that's nothing like smashing a person in the face with a hammer. It isn't anything like doing it, but it's tapping into that little that little part of you. It's, it is. No, there's no little I, part I, of me that wants to hurt somebody. I don't yes, want to. I don't want to. You're a human somebody. being. That's absolute nonsense. No, I'm not saying. Being. I'm not saying I'm not capable of it. 
I have no desire to kill someone or shoot someone. I, in fact, don't enjoy games where it is just shoot someone. I often decline playing with Lou if he fancies playing Killing Floor or something because it's just fucking boring to me. I've got no interest in it whatsoever. I, 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 it, but that's a game. But in real life, yeah, I sit there and I go, oh, it wouldn't be nice if I could stab him in the face. No, no one thinks like Well, okay, <laughs> some people think that. I don't think like that, but no. I, I, I completely agree with Sam. I think it, 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 it kind of it sits an urge that's somewhere deep urge. down. It, Stop some, using it, these words. Well, no, it's 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 like an instinctual thing. We're, we're all animals in the end, and animals kill each other. And this is yeah. this is in for some a way, purpose, not in cold blood. Hmm. No. Animals don't kill each other for kicks; they kill each other for survival. No, I know that. Where does the higher power survival's in jeopardy? So that survival instinct never kicks in. If you're in a position where it was you or someone else and there was a knife there, I'm pretty sure that, you know, the majority of people would... It's fight or flight, isn't it? But yeah. I, I, we're never in that situation. I would never deny that if I was in that kind of situation, I'd probably murder somebody. I would kill them. But I'm not in that situation. And I have no desire to get involved in that or, or even... I don't even think... It doesn't even come in my head. I, I, I understand the instinct part slightly, but any kind of any kind of satisfaction or enjoyment that I get from killing someone in a game sorry, from playing a game is not killing somebody. Well, I don't know what this speaks about me, but I, I enjoy killing people in games. I find it satisfying to kill people. Yeah, in I games. do too. I'm not even I find I find building and exploring and if killing is part of it, then yes, I enjoy I, I I, I like hunting animals in games. That's interesting. I like hunting animals. The games that have got like Oblivion and um, Red Dead Redemption and anything that's got like crafting because that it, that's a purpose to survive in the game. But I don't. I mean, I actually have more compassion for animals in real life than I do human beings. For God's sake. Yeah, I do. I do. So I, don't I enjoy hunting animals in games I, as well. I don't know where that fit sits. I don't know what that. Mix. Oh, maybe I'm. Maybe it's, I'm a it's maniac. A, it's kind of the thrill of the chase, isn't it? It's that. It's that. It, it is that hunting thing. It's that getting one over on 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 another life form. No. Thing stop that putting is it awesome. like that. Stop making it out that I want to murder everything. <laughs> getting is, one that's over. A, that's what, a really really you? like core part of of being alive. That's like a well, thing. Getting that one over. Exists. On. No, of course it's, it's, of course it it's is. not. It's survival instinct. You, 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 we're hunter gatherers. Yeah, but the fact, the fact that, the fact that, like, all, loads of things that that we that are hardwired into us for survival, that release endorphins when you do those things, is because it helps you survive. Therefore, yeah. you equate those good feelings with doing the survival stuff. That's that's that, that's so that's just been true forever. Exactly. And, and as, the, as, the feeling that you get from playing games and doing stuff is totally tapping into that. It, it, you can also is. get endorphins from putting a belt around your neck, hang yourself in the door and over, masturbate, and it doesn't make it natural. <laughs> no, but the feeling that you get totally is part of nature. Of course it is, otherwise it wouldn't it exist. Is, no, Those it chemicals is. wouldn't be in there in your body to get released in the first place. Yeah, that dopamine and that serotonin that gets released when, when you, you're you being rewarded for doing something which is either going to aid your survival or pro- help you procreate. I, I just yeah. I just said I agree with that sentiment that the there's an instinct there somewhere deep down, but I'm still gonna stick by I don't enjoy killing people in games. Oh, I don't right. get any satisfaction from that particular element of a game. I would ra- I would rather play a game that doesn't kill people. I would rather play through a game that gives me the option to be stealthy and be stealthy and not kill anyone. But that's why you're making a game which doesn't have any guns in it. Well, I'm doing that because there's not many of them. But it's also because I, it's the sort of thing you want to do. Yeah, I did. I did experiment with guns at the beginning, but I'm actually doing it because of technical limitations and and time and effort that needs to be put into a decent gun system. Even though I've got something half written, I still have to put a lot of effort into getting it working with different types of guns. And so, what's, what about you, Steve? Then, because you 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 uh, you are an aggressive player in games. You go for big hammers and smash people with them. Yet you kind of agree with Chris that it's not a. Uh, a cathartic thing, or, or even in, maybe an enjoyable thing, for the the reasons that we're talking about. So, what it's do you get out of it? End. It's a means to an end. It's not that I don't enjoy it, but that to me does not translate to real life, and I've got no mechanism in my head that would allow that to happen. I have no interest when I'm playing a Diablo three with you two of 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 playing that and just hitting people. I enjoy playing melee characters, but I also prefer playing melee tanks. But the melee tanks 
as we all know, are to absorb damage and to lure enemies away from other people. So maybe I've got a protective element in my personality that I'm not aware of because I couldn't... I, I, I don't know where that would come from because I'm not a particularly yeah. protective person. So I don't see the things on the computer screen as living things with the yes. personality of it. It's, it's, is... it's not something I'm associating that I'm hurting something. There is, there is no association there at all with yeah. real life in my eyes. I mean, it's yeah. great when it becomes real, more realistic and it becomes more in-depth and immersive, but it's still never, ever, ever, ever going to replace real life or replace the feelings that I get from murdering someone down the street. I don't think it's necessarily a conscious <laughs> thing. I mean, a, a, a weird position that I was put in was when I first played um, Half-Life 2 on the Oculus Rift, because you're walking up to people who are almost real, and Greg said this when he played it. He said, although they're made of polygons and they look a bit weird, they stood there in front of you, and your brain is telling you that you're 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 in the presence of another person, even though that person's doing weird things and twitching and walking sideways and looking at the ceiling and stuff. There's still there's still something there, and it makes it harder to kill people, or it makes it harder to hit people. It makes you more afraid of them. Uh, you know the guard, I, the guards are terrifying. I didn't get that. I got the terrifying like um, height thing, and I did get the presence. I got the feeling that I was there with them, but I still knew that it was a computer game. Like even you instinctively, do, but no, but no, but you're talking about that that split second where you go, mm, should I? You know. Yeah. But I did. I didn't get that because I know it's a computer game. My brain is extremely like logical and realistic in terms of. Uh, re I'm, a, I'm a bit. I'm a realist in every situation, and I always want to try and uh, do, I suppose, do the right thing. But I know that computer games, it doesn't matter. There's no actual consequences apart from I might die in the game. Mm. There's nothing, nothing's going to happen to me. Uh, it doesn't have any kind of realistic basis, uh, well, apart from the design sometimes. But yeah, it's like. Do you see? Do you, am I explaining myself at all? Do I? You are, I but I think you just your what you get out of games in that respect is slightly different from what I get out of games because I I do like to inhabit them a bit more. I like to to get in the zone and feel like I'm I'm kind of there. But you've always said that you don't feel like you're the character. You feel like you're just playing the character. Yeah, you always no, know yeah. that you're not playing the character, but it's a bit like let's pretend. It's just fun to just pretend for a little yeah. bit. Oh, no, no, you know it's not, not real. I'm not, I'm not like an idiot who thinks that I'm fucking Ezio or whatever. But it's like <laughs> it's fun to it's fun to indulge in the in the fantasy of it. The same way that you play army soldiers when you were a kid. You know you're not yeah. a soldier, but it's yeah. fun to just play the game. Maybe I yeah, grew up I, too I, young then. When I was a kid, we used to play games with guns. Like me and you used to play alone. We used to play shoot each other, and you know, whatever. But at no point during them was. Did, did I ever fantasize or wish that the gun was real? And I, you know, no, I, I never said that. You know, there's a word for all this that we're talking about, the, the stuff that we've been talking about for the last 30 minutes. I don't know what it is, but there's a word for it. I'm sure there Th is. There will be a word for this particular... F um, is it... What's it called? That qualia? Is it qualia, possibly? That qualia is... It's um, that un... un it's, it's a non-tangible kind of... Um, uh, to individual instances of subjective conscious experience. So it's how you perceive things compared to how I perceive things, which is you'll never know how how it is to someone yeah, else. Yeah, it's like red. Yeah, red yeah. is red is red to me, but it may be yellow to you, but you see it as red. You know, that's just yeah, okay. But I, I, I said I just I just don't I I do I get loads of enjoyment from games. I I really thoroughly enjoy it, but I don't ever feel like I shouldn't do something in a game because I might. So I, I, it's like can I, ask, I, I, can I, I can ask only equate. Do you ever go to, on a rampage in games? Like, do you ever go on a rampage in like GTA or Skyrim? Yeah. Do you ever just go like, I'm just going to go kill everybody? Yep, save yeah. the game, go on a rampage, load the game back up for the purpose of fun. Because it's for fun the purpose to kill of, the dudes. No, 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 no. We're not no, no, killing no, the people. For the you? purpose yeah. of experimenting what? within the game mechanics. I, I, if I do that, I'll do that for a specific reason, such as uh, I want to oh. see what happens. When uh, when I kill these guys, is anything actually going to happen? And then and then it's while curiosity. I'm around, I just yeah. I mean, yeah. Grand Theft Auto. It's not a case of I want to kill everyone in the world. It's a case of I want to try and get five stars and see how long I can survive. Or yeah, I'd I want agree to see with what that, happens actually. when yeah, I do. I can, yeah, I can go with that. All right, fair enough. Because yeah, that, I, yeah. I, but but on the on the kind of flip side of that, uh, I feel bad if like. Um, <laughs> I don't feel too bad about it because I still do it, but just say like a, um, an ambulance comes along after I've just killed the first coppers and I've brought the ambulance up. I do feel a bit bad about that. 
And if I was taking it in a completely like objective, logical yeah, no, way, you're... I shouldn't feel bad about it because I'm just killing okay. digital characters that have no bearing on anything. I am an objective, logical person then because I couldn't give a crap about those those yeah, those I lines of code that have been written to generate that that image on the screen. I know I am entirely disconnected. You are going to be a serial killer. Lou. <laughs> yeah. It's simple as that. You are going to be a serial killer at some point in your life. Watch this space, everybody. I'm it. not going to do anything about it, like report him or anything. He's gonna, he's just going to be a serial Don't kill to us, be, though. To be fair, I agree with Lee on this particular subject, so I'm probably going to be one as well. Whatever. They had I'm it not coming. They it. all had it coming. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> I'm, not saying, I'm not saying I disagree with you in terms of... I, I, I can understand how some people may get enjoyment, and it's not a sick enjoyment from going into a computer game and killing people, because it is... It's a, it's, but I don't, I don't feel like I've played the game right if I do that. If I go through a game and kill everybody, whenever I play... In fact, here you go. Whenever I play a, a game and it's got an option of being nice and bad, I'll play the nice first, and then I'll play the bad, but I'll get bored of it. And I'll, I'll end I up... Always, I always play the nice. I don't even try the bad. Uh, or, or, you know, the kill or non-kill. You know, and I'll always do the non-kill. And then when I start doing the kill stuff, it's like... One, I've already played the game all the way through. Two, I'm not really enjoying like the the murderous rampage that I'm I, going I, on. I like to think that I could play through a game again and do it slightly differently, but I tend to go back to the things that I enjoy in that game. So I don't try. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not curious about different routes to the game like that. If it if it goes against the way that I would play the game naturally, I will, as I said, save a game and then try a few different routes sometimes. But sometimes I'll just be like, "No, Chris, just do the the one, and don't don't spoil it for yourself. Play it, play it again." Sorry. I uh, I actually have a very similar thing to Chris that I'll do the good one first because it's usually what I want to do anyway. Like it's usually the option I would take, just because that's what I would like to do. You know, whatever. Yeah. But I'll play through the the, the bad one again just to see what it's like a lot of the time, or just to see what happens. Like if there's a different ending, if there's different cutscenes, if it affects whatever um infamous i used to play through infamous as the bad guy just to see what the different powers were and i always preferred the good powers as well because they were usually more accurate and more clean whereas in the, set, yep. the, the bad powers were all more destructive and more messy think about like that as much. think about how what we, we basically all of us have said that we like to play through games on the nice setting on the good setting on the moral setting yeah usually or, or, mm. or options or whatever do you not think that maybe the the good powers or the what they're called in is it karma is it karma in infamous? positive karma negative yeah karma, that's it. so the good power the good powers in infamous are more interesting and better and better be one because they're designed to appeal to a, a lighter sensibility they're, they're, they're designed to appeal to someone who's nicer possibly and two maybe the people who are testing the game and designing the game are also human <laughs> <laughs> You know, that sounded so. daft. That did come out a bit daft, but you know what I mean? They're, they're human at the end of the day, and they most humans are generally quite nice-natured underneath. Yeah. You know, when they come down to it and they sit down in the living room, they're generally quite nice people, humans. But they've projected that into the game, so the bad powers maybe aren't as good. That's just an idea. I'm not saying I've read that anywhere. It's, or anything uh, like. yeah, it's with, with, um, with other media, like... Um, like uh, theatre and movies, which are a mo actors lot more. Tend to want to play the bad guys, but they're a lot more advanced as well in terms of um, uh, maturity. Sorry, we've we've mentioned this a few times. Games are relatively new and relatively new ways of of expressing yourself or expressing designs or whatever. Mm. So maybe that is a repercussion of people getting bored of the same old, same old within movies and films and games, of these old heartful, you know, these 50, 40s and 50s movies that are all full of great, you know, great endings and happy endings and stuff, even if bad things happen in it. Maybe games are becoming more mature. They, they're starting to do more cinematic stuff. There's more of that European kind of misogyny in, in games these days, and it's becoming a little bit more uh, sombre, let's say. Mm. It um certainly I mean I'm trying to think of games now which have made you play a bad guy and I can only think of um Postal really the Postal series GTA you're, you're bad, not really a yeah. bad guy you're not yeah, you really are. A pretty bad much guy. Are. if you if you look at like look at CJ right this guy's just dropped he's just dropped out of jail he lives in the a worst neighborhood every single decision that he makes and every single cutscene is pretty much fuck the police fuck this I'm gonna go and kill a lot of n words but he's still a protagonist though isn't he he's still 
He's still a character which you have to empathise with. You're still rooting for him, but that doesn't mean he's a good guy. Yeah. Uh, some people are very... Uh, some actors are very good. Is he not an anti-hero, good. though? Yeah, that's still an anti-hero. It's anti-hero, still a bad yeah. guy. It just means that you have some kind of connection or empathy with him, although you didn't, as you've said before. No, I didn't. I didn't like... Uh... I, I had quite a... I don't know why. But, uh... <laughs> it's totally not anywhere... Nothing like me, but... I quite liked CJ. What about Tommy Vassetti from Vice City then? Because he was much more easily into that just... He knew, he was a dickhead and totally knew he was and didn't care that he was one. And I found him a very enjoyable like protagonist Trevor, as well. Trevor in Five. He's just a nutter. Doesn't yeah. care at all. Whereas there's uh, Franklin, who's a bit ambiguous, and then there's Michael, who's trying to be good, but is actually going to always Dick. drag back in. Get dragged yeah. back in. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, and there's I a think... co- uh, there's, what else games do you play a bad guy in? You kind of play, uh, yeah. Grand Theft Auto is really well known for it. I'm trying to think of other ones. I can't think of any. There'll you be more. Ch- there's be games lords. where you can choose to be. Again, you can sort of choose to yeah. do it. It's a fair card. You can choose. I'm to thinking be games where you actually shepherd a dickhead, an out and out bad guy. Yeah, where yeah. It, you you set out to be. I, I don't know. Is is the is God of War? Is Kratos a bad guy or again? Yeah, quite, he pretty is... much is. But you kind of he's meant to be on his side at least in the first game. He's he's um, he's a bit yeah in the first game he's a bit um, he's an anti-hero ambiguous ambiguous. I, I know we mentioned it in every one now, but there's also a shot of the Colossus, isn't there? Where you you kind of it's introduced like you're playing a good guy, but you're but actually not. That's also you're androgynous at the same time as being ambiguous. You're not androgynous. You're not David Bowie. <laughs> Uh, ambiguous. <laughs> no, you're both. I'm pretty sure that you. Uh, he is a little bit androgynous. Isn't, isn't the sex the sex of the characters a little bit up in the air? You're not sure. All right, sorry. But that is <clears throat> that's the same. That's the same thing with all of the uh, T. Michael games, and even the more recent one that's coming out. Rhyme is that T. Michael? Is that someone who? T. Michael will work. T. Michael will working on the Last Guardian, but that uh. all seems to have fallen by the wayside. Yeah, but which I think is a shame Rhyme, that game looked awesome. I think Rhyme is being done by. The old someone who was in Team Ico, I think maybe a designer who's now okay. got another studio, and Rhyme is being done by him, and that the character in that is androgynous as well. I've not heard of Rhyme. I don't even know what that is. Um, it's it's in the latest PlayStation mags. Surely you you've read I don't them. Buy them. I'm not voting for ages. Right, okay. Not too androgyny has got to do with uh, good or bad. Um, um, I was just saying that it's, it's, it's the, neutral, the characters. Isn't it, yeah, it's the neutrality of the character. You get to play as Darth Vader in Star Wars: A Force Unleashed. He's a bad guy. Are you? Is that who you are in the game? You're playing for one level. All oh, right. You do, don't you? The very oh, beginning is yeah. awesome. That but level. Star Slayer is also a bad guy in the first one. Up to a point. Is he? Up to a He's point. He's trained to be a bad guy. That as soon as you're unleashed out on your missions, you get the choice whether or not to do bad stuff. Knights of the Old Republic. You are the ultimate bad guy. You're Revan. You're this. Sorry if anyone's not played it, but uh, <laughs> that, that's basically the big reveal in the game. You're Revan. You're this guy who's. Who's well? This guy or girl who's known in the universe to be a, a warlord, but you're playing as a Jedi all the way through the game. Really cool. The story in that game. I'm getting goosebumps thinking about it. It's a brilliant. It's a brilliant setup. I need to play them again. I really wish I could get into Bioware games, but I've not got into I any of them. them. I love the mechanics because they're slow and they're careful and considered, and they're, they're quite restrictive Bioware games. But the I, I like the options that they've given us. You know, I, they write I, good characters as well, which you probably you seem like you'd likely. They write mm. good characters that you start to actually give a shit about. Maybe. And to be fair, fall in love with a little bit in some of them. I don't know who you're thinking of specifically at the moment, but I'm thinking of uh, Morrigan in uh, uh, Dragon Age Origins, sexy witch, and anyone who's played Dragon Age Origins will will agree with me. Any man, anyway, or lesbian. <laughs> <laughs> Inclusivity. Yes, that's yeah. what, what we're all about here. That and stabbing children. Yes, <laughs> yes. We can't, we can't that's forget inclusive. our. We can't forget our core. That, that's, you know, that, that, is, that is the epitome of inclusivity. Right that there. was my point. That, that was my <laughs> point when we were talking about it. Welcome. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm not having yeah, it. Yeah. I can, I can stab adults, but I can't stab children. So obviously, yeah. Mm. So, um, any other things that you guys want to talk about with death? Then are you? Uh, Oh, there was just one thing, and it, this is something that is that is really in Hollywood movies as well. That it was sort of the trivialization of death. Like when you play a game and you go around mowing down bad guys, and then when one of your characters dies, it's like all oh, the slow motion and it's epic and there's music and all that. And the, the film that I really think this is a good analog that fits with was Black Hawk Down, because in Black Hawk Down, 
every time an American soldier dies, it's like, oh, slow mo, tell but mom I love her. But then hundreds in, 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 of arrows die. Hundreds of, yeah. They just kill hundreds of them with all this ammo that they shouldn't really have. And but it's Ram like, Rambo's guilty of that as well, the, the most recent Rambo. Uh, all, well, all uh, the that, Rambo that, two and three do that as well. But the, the most recent Rambo's got the highest kill count, and that was the main point of that film. Now, yeah. I enjoy watching that, but I don't. I wouldn't enjoy being part of it, or I don't enjoy necessarily killing. But I do enjoy watching the ridiculousness of it. <laughs> it's the utter ridiculousness. It's not yeah. the fact that they're killing somebody. It's the fact that it's how they're killing someone and. And how much effort they're putting into the death scenes and things like that, you know, yeah. it's, that's what I get from it. But I, I just think that's a common thing of the, the, the when, you, when it's a character that's meant to be on your side, it's all really epic and important and just and horrible. When it's just henchman number seventy three, don't matter. Just doesn't. I thought of another game where you're supposed to be evil. Yeah, uh, Dungeon Keeper. Oh yeah, good oh, yeah, it's yeah. Good to be bad. I, I've. Yeah. Um, I've downloaded that. It was free on GOG a while back. I haven't yet played it, and I didn't play it originally. And I know that I'm going to enjoy it because it's it, it, awesome. It's, 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 cool game, it? it's yeah. purely evil as well. I mean, there's there's no there's no ambiguity about it. You are no. the the evil guy, and all of the kind of fairies and heroes are coming to the dungeon. Yeah, the, you have to the kill enemies. them. But it makes <laughs> them it makes them awesome. so awful, though, doesn't it? It's, it's like yeah. the, way, the way it personifies these 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 kind of disgusting, yeah. nice characters. It's disgusting. He's coming to your realm and he's trying few, to destroy your dungeon heart. A few people in the chat uh, in the channel have been uh, chatting about things. I just want to ask anybody before we finish: Is there any other games that you are aware of where people speak? Uh, sorry, speak where other pe where you play a bad guy specifically, and you're Ooh. you're supposed to be bad. Um, Overlord. I was yes. going to say Overlord. I saw you playing that, Chris. I've got ago. I've got Overlord two on the three hundred and sixty, and it was a, quite a lot of fun actually. Just, it is. Just, it's it's silly, but it's fun. But it's not a great game either. It's it's not a particularly nice looking or well implemented game. But I really no. enjoyed the daftness of it. You know. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of things like that. A lot of the games tend to have minions, don't they? That you you send and do things, but you don't necessarily directly get involved with it. Even though as Overlord, you can run around and chop people. You can't up. hit them yourself, but even in Dungeon Keeper, you don't. Apart from casting spells, you don't actually interact with any of the enemies directly. You don't yourself. Go deck them yourself. This, you can. There's you a there's a hole in the market oh. here, but then again, it'll probably get. It'll you can't. Get... You can either, you can you can only use spells yes, to affect them. Yeah, but that's a possession spell. You possess one of your demons or creatures and then attack them with that. Yeah. You're not attacking them directly. No, you can't attack them. But I suppose you can use those spells on them, like lightning and stuff, and you can slap your own creatures. But, yeah, there's yeah. no way for you to fight against the enemy. You've got to get your minions to do it for you or your traps or whatever. Give him a slip. <laughs> <laughs> Cockney Dungeon Keeper. <laughs> yeah, for some reason it just seems to be about right, doesn't it? I don't know why. <laughs> I'm just having a quick look through my games to see if I can see any that immediately. I'm looking. At, I keep looking at my um my, my well, stuff on the wall. Uh, <laughs> lots of anti-heroes, aren't there? Lots of anti-heroes. Yeah, in Duke yeah, Nukem and, and outright bad guys. It's a bit harder to come by. Duke Nukem's not an anti-hero, is he? Well, he's sort he's, he's sort of an overtly so heroic. So yeah, exactly. Douche, douchebag as well. Yeah, he's baseball. not. He's not an anti-hero. That's not the definition. Right, he's of it. saving the world and saving the babes, but he's also not exactly doing it in a very heroic way. Um, Borrow Twisted Metal. Games. <laughs> Sorry? Borrow Twisted Metal. Twisted Metal's quite yeah. an interesting one, yeah, because most of the characters are in it for some selfish reason, aren't they? The, there's, yeah. also, there's also uh, Mario Kart. You can play Wario and stuff, but that's not really a playing a bad Calm guy, is it? Yeah, can't There you again. go, Wario. Wario's a bad guy. His game, you were meant... Wasn't there a, a Mario, Mario World. game? Uh, hasn't but also he... Carmageddon, where you get points from running people over as well, don't you? Yeah, I'm not so sure if you're playing a bad guy in that, though, because it's not... Huh? Uh, I think no. I think you will be, regardless of who the, the actual protagonist is. You're running people over, and that's the point. You of are. The game. I don't. I guess so. I guess, I guess all the characters are where the. At least, at least in GTA, game. you can play it without killing a single pedestrian if you really want to. I suppose you. Could well, I think there might be some missions. Can't be getting as well. Could you? Could you win? Hard. Could you win by not killing anybody? Yeah, you can race. No one actually races in that game. Everyone ends up killing everyone, but you can actually race around the circuit and beat them by getting a better time. That's no one, no one has ever played Carmageddon that way. I might add. I've got a game. <laughs> I've got a game here that I've I've had for ages, but I haven't actually uh, played. Cthulhu Saves the World. It's an indie game, so you may play as Cthulhu in that. That's I imagine Cthulhu is classed as a bad guy. I think it's like, I think it's a bit of an old school adventure game that as well from what I've seen of it. I'm sure. 
heard of that one. Uh, I think that's about it, isn't it? So, well, oh, I'm, I'm sure there are other ones, but I can't. There's none that stand out. Oh, Devil McCry is is uh, oh. is he a Dante's is he a not a bad guy. He's, he's a, just a dick. He's an he's hero. A yeah, he's just again like he's a just a douche. <laughs> just a douche. Um, Alien vs Predator. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, actually, the, the the aliens are a good example of that. They're essentially our bad guys, aren't they? But in well, the predators are, are they guys. though? Aliens because they're aliens. Creatures. There's animals. The predators aren't really. are bad guys. They're predators though. Well, is he? He's very yeah, he's bad. very honourable. Yeah, yeah. He's I, not. I, he I, hunts not people without weapons. It is depends. it really honourable? He hunts them down with fucking heat vision and a massive laser on his shoulder. It does, but the whole he, point is that it, it's about. It's about Stealth him facing cabo. off. Well, I, it's about him facing off against the best warriors of the planets that they land on, isn't it? That's what predators do. What about Agent Forty Seven? Do we class him yeah. as a bad guy? Well, he does he land on someone's planet and then goes yeah. on a, a massacre for people who didn't really want to fight him in the first place. That's pretty evil. Yeah, but he's not. The, uh, I like the predator. I, I like the. Uh, oh, he's the a good character. This, I, I um, think he's an evil character. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not so sure. With Agent Forty Seven, I think it's some. I think there's an element of this. In, it's probably not just in this one, but in the Japanese Samurai Code, where if you're if you're ordered to go and do a job, you are the sword, not the hand that wields the sword. Yeah. So Agent Forty Seven, as, as an assassin, is being told to carry out hits. He's not emotionally invested in them, so therefore he's not really a bad guy. That's and why he we... was cre he was genetically created to be an assassin as well. And that's why we can't really put any of the Assassin's Creed protagonists in a bad guy. Light, is um, the same thing. Warcraft Three, The Frozen you... Throne. Yeah, right, no, but well... you're, you're you're playing. I suppose yeah, the, in the campaign, yes, but as a multiplayer, it doesn't count. It doesn't matter. Oh no, but, but in the single player campaign, yeah, you play from both sides, don't you? You how get about, to see each side. How about this? Yeah. This is a pretty ambiguous one. The guy in Hotline Miami. Oh, that's yeah, cool. uh, he's a psycho. Like you play, you're playing someone who's disturbed. Is he a dying. psycho or is he a trained killer? No, he's a psycho. It, it, it's quite obvious that the game is showing that you're mentally kind of breaking down throughout the game. Yeah. Okay. It's 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 a simulation of someone someone with serious kind of antisocial hmm. <laughs> mental traits. <laughs> yeah, it's great. It, I mean, it, it, if ever a game could be called a psycho simulator, it's Hot Mi Hotline Miami. That, have you played? Um, oh, that Manhunt. Uh, yeah, I that's that. I've played I've, bits of it. That is yeah, that, that is disturbing. If that you're a bad guy in that, Jesus Christ! There we go. <laughs> you are a bad guy. You're 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 like the but in that you're sort of the lesser of two evils because the guy who's giving you the orders of the you get basically pulled out of prison. You're on death row. You're about to be killed. You wake up in a weird room and this guy appears and says, put this radio on. Like, he appears on TV, says, put this radio on. So you put a radio in your ear, like, and he talks to you. And he's voiced by Brian Cox, who does a great job, like, being this creepy, like, dude. And he's this, there, like, basically... This is I'm Brian making... Cox or uh, X-Men Brian Cox? X-Men Brian Cox, <laughs> not, not, not like the universe this is amazing. Is amazing <laughs> Brian Cox. <laughs> Imagine if you shove some grass into that bloke's eye. Stop. <laughs> Stop. It'd be just like it. That'd be awesome. If someone did like an edited version of that, I'd fucking love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that game. Take that crowbar. So the character you play is uh, is gonna die for Matt for being this. I don't know if he's a serial killer, but he's definitely a murderer. And uh, but you're then told to go and kill guys, and make it as gory as possible. And he says that he's got you holding your family hostage. So you are a bad guy. Mm. But you're the lesser of two evils in that game, but you're still definitely a bad guy. No question about it. There's, there's a lot of game, ambiguous actually. characters. There's a lot of uh, morally questionable characters, but there's not many more that I can see in my I, list I, anyway that are I, bad. Personally, I think that the best protagonists are the ones that are, are ambiguous, that, that have traits of both. Of course, because the best protagonists are the ones that well, the appeal best to the widest audience. Well. You know, Sephiroth's a great buddy because he's kind of not a complete baddie he's the, you know he's been betrayed just as much as the other characters have uh, he's also completely crazy and he is completely crazy but you can you can you can kind of empathize with him to a bit actually is he crazy because all those things are actually happening to him and you know because we're it's fantasy isn't it it's it's happening in that world but to us it's like it's fantasy mm. so is he crazy or is he just embracing a particular Lifestyle in that in that game. <laughs> the, the Sephiroth lifestyle. Becoming becoming the son of Jehovah. Jehovah. <laughs> Sephiroth the curiosity. Jehovah. 
Jehovah. Jehovah? <laughs> you're, th- you're reading the Stop Bible it. again here. <laughs> Yep, I'm actually struggling now to find any others. And The Witcher? What about the guy in The Witcher? Is he good? Uh, I suppose he's good, isn't he? He's doing a, a job to help to be, do good things, isn't yeah, he? He's kills a mercenary, so he's neither good nor bad, really. So I think um, I think that's that's probably the exhaustive list of, of <laughs> games where you play a bad guy. I think there's a good market there for, for a good game where you play a bad guy and it's fun to be bad. Hmm. But it's fun to be bad in lots of games, isn't it? To an extent. Yeah. Hmm. Anyway. Maybe it says something about, you know, the population of gamers in general that games where you are the bad guy don't really take off. So that's, uh, that's why I think it's made. interesting. Like I say, actors always want to play the bad guy, yet gamers want to play the good guy, generally. Is it because the, the bad guy is not any more memorable? Maybe because the bad guy puts you un, uh, in an uncomfortable position, especially if you don't have any choice in it. Because at least if I make a conscious choice in, in Mass Effect to do something bad, I know you're not exactly good and bad in that, it's imbag- ambiguous all the way through, yeah. but if you had a choice to do something really bad, then you've made that choice consciously. You know that you've done it. No, I mean, I know that I do it because it's it's not... I just yeah. want to see what happens. It's not because that's actually what I'm... I've excused myself before I've actually made the choice, you know? Mm. don't know. Black and white. It's a choice yeah. thing. Then, yeah, is, it is, it but is. It's, an, it's another... You can be a bad guy. You can slap your monkey around and... <laughs> you look at a monkey be... slapping. Oh, I love that. I love slapping that monkey. I swear to <laughs> God. It's the best, the best I just love if the steam just cut off there. That was it. That was the end of it. <laughs> I love, I love slapping that monkey. <laughs> <laughs> Little girl from ITV2 comes up. <laughs> Put a test card. With that weird clown thing next to her. Yeah. Um, right, anyway, I think I'll close the show then anyway because we're obviously uh, lagging behind a little bit. Thank you very much for everyone in the chat. Thank you for your participation. Um, we will uh, see you next week. Uh, we haven't decided on a subject, but we will do that after the show and we'll inform yeah. everybody via Twitter. So thank you very much, everyone. And we'll see you later. See you later. Bye.